Good morning, everybody. Happy 2020 as we start the new year, January 2nd, 2020. It's 33 degrees outside. And uh, as I start my eighth decade, uh, Shaman Tobin joins me, half man, half amazing, and Cantaloupes, still in Cantaloupes. <laughs> Got to be there, baby. It's the only place where there's snow. That's and right. a lot of it. Got it's some cold. snow up there, huh? wintry fresh snow every day oh my goodness gracious it's <laughs> it's just like the other side of the world you know yeah. well uh we got a little snow in our forecast as well so uh might as well jump right into it huh did, did you, you have a good new up? year's oh yeah it's just terrific did you see what happened in delhi the coldest weather in a hundred years really go figure oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well it's uh climate change that's yeah yeah, yeah that's I know. probably uh, yeah. like 10 yeah. degrees yeah, and and people in the street and and the air, the air uh, is so bad it's like thirty times the li limit legal or health limit. Oh like, yeah, wow, it's a catastrophe. You know, I don't know the a... the weather was great in all our delis here, so I don't know. Oh, delis here, yeah, that's a good one. I like that. <laughs> I don't know. Well, yeah, yeah. that uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was seventy degrees in most delis, I think, in the U.S. So at least, I think so. Yeah. At least that's... seventy to seventy-five, somewhere like. That. Yeah, we have air conditioning. And that's right. Heat. Yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty normal in our delis. So. <laughs> yeah, deli, deli here. Yeah, yeah. right. right. Well, uh, yeah, we uh, smoked meat sandwich, a Montreal smoked meat sandwich, no, yeah. hot mustard and a pickle. Mm, yep. Mm, well, mm. we uh, we did ham for Christmas, so we still got ham left over, and we're having ham sandwiches, ham and Swiss on rye. That's nice. Or eggs many in the morning. Uh, well, yeah, I guess you could do that. Yeah. Well, you have to make hollandaise sauce. I'm sure you're just all about making sauce. Yeah, yeah, I uh, yeah. If it uh, if it isn't already made, uh, I don't make it. So, well, I, I know you as a saucy guy, but yeah, not literally. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a, yeah. Gravy's as far as I go. Gravy's as far as you go. Got to have gravy, but. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Enough of that. All right. Tell us the weather because everyone wants to know if they should go skiing. Well, uh, yeah, they should go skiing, actually, because we got a 40% chance of snow, mainly between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. It's going to be mostly cloudy with the temperature rising near 37 by 11 and then falling to around 30 during the remainder of the day. And uh, so uh, we're looking for a high wind gust too, up to 30 miles an hour or more. A uh, new snow accumulation of less than half an inch is uh, possible. And then uh, tonight, Thursday night, uh, we got a 30% chance of snow after 5 a.m. and mostly cloudy with a low around 21. And new snow accumulation of less than half an inch is possible for Thursday night. Then we move into Friday, a slight chance of rain and snow before noon. Then a slight chance of rain between noon and 4 p.m. Then a slight chance of rain and snow after 4 p.m. It's going to be mostly cloudy with a high near 40 and uh, west uh, winds 15 miles an hour with gusts up to 22 and a chance of precip on Friday is only 20%, so not too bad. Friday night, mostly cloudy with a low around 27. And uh, Saturday, 50% chance of snow after 11 a.m., partly sunny with a high near 41. Little or no snow accumulation expected. And then on Saturday night, uh, partly cloudy with a low around 18. Then on Sunday, uh, Sunday rather, it's going to be mostly sunny. With a high near 32, and Sunday night mostly cloudy, with a low around 19. And then uh, for your commute back to work on Monday, slight chance of snow before 11 a.m. Mostly cloudy with a high near 33, and then Monday night mostly cloudy with a low around 20. So uh, looking pretty good for the week. A uh, little snow, uh, probably more snow in the mountains uh, at the ski resorts where it's needed. Then uh, we'll get down here, but uh, not too bad. Current temperatures around the area, Livingston right now is 36 degrees, Manhattan's 35, Three Forks is 36, Galton Gateway checks in at 27, Big Sky is 22, West Yellowstone is 22, Gardner's 22, Ennis is 30, and uh, at our lavishly appointed downtown studios in Bozeman, <laughs> it's 33 degrees here at 10 minutes after the hour of 6 a.m., and that's your weather for today. My goodness gracious, how yeah. wonderful. Yeah. 
Well, everyone had seemed to have great weather for New Year's over, around the world. The fireworks were amazing. Did you watch any? I watched some of those. Yeah, they started pretty early, of course, because you know the time changes and everything, and started on the other side of the world. And yeah, everybody seemed to have a pretty good fireworks time. So yeah, there's my talk to my daughter in Australia. Of course, yeah. there's a big brouhaha. They they you know they didn't want the fireworks. They wanted the money spent. You know, on fighting the fires, which right. are horrific. Yeah. You know? And then, of course, uh, Chile we didn't see because it's still rioting and on fire. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Mexico, they just have pop bottle rockets. So, yeah, they there. can't do much there. Uh, yeah. But some of the buildings, you know, like in Dubai and, and the, the Arc de Triomphe and the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin. And yeah. wow, they were pretty cool. I did some, yeah, did yeah. some impressive stuff. Yeah. Yeah, not and, too bad at all. Yeah. Taipei with yeah. the big building and down in Malaysia. Yeah. There's like, yeah. you get to go around the world during these holidays and you go, wow, what a place we live on. Yeah. Well, the nice thing about living in uh, California or living here is that you uh, get the Times Square thing uh, two to three <laughs> hours early so you can go to bed at a decent hour. <laughs> you don't have to stay up and uh, you know, you're great i love it do, yeah do the stuff we do here so uh yeah you get to drop the ball drop at nine o'clock in uh, california and of course <laughs> 10 o'clock here so uh, well and the remarkable thing no incidents worldwide so we can be happy with that right well other than the baghdad thing but other well than that, that's uh, yeah that's a whole nother Whole that, other thing that, there. We got to briefly talk about that. Get to five things you want to know. Yeah, we'll do that we, later on in the show. Yeah. Mike McCormick will join us at seven o'clock as he normally does, and we'll be a chat with him. And uh, road report around the area right now is pretty nasty out there. So uh, uh, it, not too bad between uh, Bozeman and Livingston. There's um, well, there's certainly high wind warnings and ice and snow along there, the Bozeman Hill. Uh, we've got uh, we've got slush and scattered uh, slushy snow there, so you got to be careful coming across. And uh, also, there's areas of frost and uh, uh, on the bridges and things like that. Uh, from uh, outside of Livingston, uh, clear over to Billings is pretty good. If you're going out of Billings uh, east, uh, not too good going that way. Uh, going up to uh, Townsend, uh, it's pretty good up to Townsend. And then uh, after you get out of Townsend, it gets a little iffy going into hell enough from there. Uh, going down uh, 191, of course, is not good at all. Uh, we've got snow and ice on the roads there. Uh, going down to uh, Gardner from 191. And also, if you're going down uh, through uh, uh, from um, Four Corners, uh, also ice and snow on 191 all the way down there. 89 out of Livingston's uh, all ice and snow. And uh, Ennis, same story, going down to west uh, from there. And uh, so not uh, not a great day. So if you're going to travel, give yourself uh, plenty of time to get there. And uh, you're going to be slowed down by some ice spots and things on the bridges and all that. So we want everybody to arrive safely, of course. Well, yeah, because mm -hmm. now it's sort of yeah. you, everybody gets to go home and act like broccoli, right? Cause You're right. The last, yeah. you know, the last two weeks have been pretty tough. Yeah, know? they have. Yeah. yeah. Uh, our poll question from uh, what Monday? I guess Monday, right? I don't know. Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday. Oh. We were off Tuesday and Wednesday, so it yeah. must have been Monday. It's a lost week, so it had to be Monday. Might have been. Must have been one, one Monday. <laughs> Uh, what New Year's resolutions are you making? Uh, 28% of you said you're going to exercise more. 26% said I never make them. 16% uh, are going to lose weight. 6% uh, are going to save money. 2% are going to spend more time with the family. 2% are going to stop drinking. And 2% are going to learn a musical instrument. And some of the other answers we had, uh, study hard was one. Uh, Ten years ago, I made a resolution to no longer make New Year's resolutions. It worked. Uh, another person says they're going to read more. Uh, somebody else says they're going to drink more hard alcohol and eat less red meat. <laughs> so that would be wow, you, probably, I, I, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> One person said they're going to find a better station to listen to. Uh, since, <laughs> since about 1990, I quit making them. And uh, did all of the uh, all did all of the above last year? This year, just paint. So, <laughs> and be a better businessman is uh, some of the ones that were made today. 
or uh, made uh, on Monday, I should say. So uh, our poll question today is, um, uh, would you would you want to know what your pet is thinking about? You don't have any pets, do you? No. No pets? No. Oh. Not me, I no. don't know. I, don't you get lonely without a dog or a cat to kind of sit on you and play with? Do you think, you think dogs and cats really solve the human loneliness factor? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Sure. Yeah, my, my wife's sitting around all day uh, waiting for me to get home, you know? Come on. Yeah, that's right. Get so the you, dogs you, you there, you know? Yeah, but you've got added on. You've got well, you the add on. Well, yeah, we, well, we got three dogs, a cat, and a bird. So <laughs> plenty my of people God. there. Yeah. Yeah, and, th and this is a large bird. I mean, it's as big as one of your No, it is. It's not a large bird. It's a it's a cockatiel. That's a large bird. <laughs> no, it isn't. It's it's bird size. Oh, Ma magpies are bigger. Magpies are bigger than this bird is. Yeah, but th does the bird talk back at you? Uh, whistles. Whistles at me. Whistles? No. Yeah. Whistles. yeah. Uh, would you want to know what your pet is thinking about? Would you want to know what your pet is thinking about? Well, 50% of you said, I don't have a pet. Um, and another, wow, that's uh, amazing. and another answer is, uh, I already do. I do know what, what my pet is thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> Pets, th pets thinking about food or treats <laughs> and, sleeping. and sleeping. Yeah. yeah or the uh, <laughs> you can put 10% in there for sex. I think. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. 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 Well, if they're ours, are all spayed or neutered, so they don't think about well, that. Say, they don't, they they don't, don't think care. about that. They don't yeah. care about you, that stuff. Yeah. So. No, you, you, eunuchs don't worry about that. Yeah, issue. that's right. So, uh, yeah, we're all right there. So, all right, we got to take care of our uh, farmers, ranchers, everybody else, uh, because of a uh, a, a snafu, Shane. Uh, the date, obviously. Yeah, that's you know? right. Uh, we're we're in a new year, so our. ID isn't working, or you know. So, I gotta tell you, this is AM fourteen fifty KMMS in Bozeman, thirteen forty KPRK in Livingston, and fine computers around the world. So that little uh, uh, glitch of dead air that you uh, saw or heard as we were coming into the top of the hour, that was where the ID was supposed to be. Oh, there so, you go. Yeah. So we'll be giving you that every once in a while, so that. Uh, the FCC doesn't come down on us that we're not uh, telling you who we are and where we are. So news and ag coming up next. 23 minutes after the hour of 6 a.m. It's Thursday, January 2nd, 2020. Wow. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy 2020 out there. Shane and Tobin, half man, half amazing. Uh, it's 2020 in Canada as well. Yeah, yeah there's th there's no scrimping on this because it's a new decade, okay? So yeah. we, we make up the 30% on the new decade. I know. It's my new decade. Uh, yes, eight, my 80th, 8th decade, not 80th, I, my 8th decade. It's just amazing. Yeah, I know. I mean, we're, we're in the 21st century, and we're already two decades in. Like, I know. Will, will, we, will we be here another 10 years, you think, Shane? <laughs> yeah, I, well, it's, like, it's like raising kids. Where did the, where did Where's the, time, the time go? go? Yeah, I yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy, well, man. You know, one other thing that we need to think about, uh, 20, uh, 2020, of course, is 100 years since the women got the vote. And we've talked You're about that. Woman. Yeah, we've talked about that many times. But the one that we forget about, Shane, is 400 years ago the pilgrims landed in 1620 That's so correct. we've got to we got to acknowledge the pilgrims a little bit as we go through 2020 uh well, and, yeah yeah they, well they, they they started off just you know as they are today mm -hmm. deep making a deal in new york you know in manhattan yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, yeah. why not yeah <laughs> let's, let's go for it well let's see uh 1492 columbus sailed the ocean blue but also, the leader of the last Arab stronghold in Spain surrendered to Spanish forces led by King Ferdinand II and Queen Isabella I. So the Arabs he, bit the dust in uh, yeah. Spain. It's a huge turning point in the history of our civilization, Western civilization, folks. This, this is the culmination of a dead space, you know, since the collapse of the Roman Empire. And the and the and the rise of the Visigoths from France and Germany, uh, who went down into into uh, Spain, which broke up into ki several kingdoms because that's the way the Middle Ages wor worked. That everybody lived in a kingdom, grew their own wine, their own food. They'd go out and fight and each other, anybody that came around. So the Moors 
came from the Middle East and uh, the Muslims, you know, that started in the 6th century, I guess the 7th century, 650. And uh, they arrived in uh, the on the Iberian Peninsula in the 7th century. And uh, it, miraculously, um, they arrived in the year 711. Now think about this, 711. It's 1492, so that's over 700 years. Yeah. And you had the kingdom of Granada, uh, the kingdom of Leon, the kingdom of Castile, you should hear, I've heard of, and the kingdom of Argonne, kingdom of Nav Navarre. And as you said, Isabel and Ferdinand, her, you know, the Catholic monarchs, uh, united the country, and in 1492, they got rid of the Moors, and uh, in came the church, Huge discovery, folks. It was because of the Moors in Spain that the Catholic Church and Western civilization learned the concept of zero. Anyway, Spain, after 1492, as we all know, with Christopher Columbus that they funded, went to the New World, conquered the Central America, brought back all the gold and silver, mm -hmm. and made Spain now, the one of the, in, in less than 100 years, the largest empire in history with 570 million people around the world. Like, this is huge. <laughs> wow. Of course, they, they, they didn't invest any of the money that they got out of the out of Central America and South America. Yeah. And they just spent it, you know, and uh, they didn't have sovereign funds back then, Tom. Well, as you were mentioning earlier, 7-Eleven, they should have invested in 7-Eleven stores. Oh, 100%, yeah, buddy. Yeah. All right. Seven... I, I had to do that rant because it's an amazing place. I know, yeah. The seven... women are beautiful, by the way. Any single guys out there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go to Barcelona. Go to Spain. Go to, Spain. Go, yeah. to, go to Barcelona. Yeah. 1788, Georgia became the fourth state to ratify the U.S. Constitution. Yeah, it, you know, it's 33rd ranked in income, 24th in size. Uh, annual income average is fifty-six thousand dollars a month. A year, or fifty-six thousand dollars a year. <laughs> Ten and a half million people, and incredibly, in the last thirty years, the population is like doubled because a lot of people from the north have come back to the south, as we mm -hmm. talked about. And, and all left uh, New York. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. And New Jersey. <laughs> that's right. Of course, they have two senators, both Republican, and they have uh, fourteen members of the House, nine Republicans, mm -hmm. five Democrats. But it looks like at least three of those Democrats are in trouble maybe this November. So that they, they may pick up three seats out of Georgia for the House in uh, the coming election. But, yeah, in a remarkable state. And and the peaches are great. I mean, yeah. Yeah, Georgia they, peaches. Uh, yeah. Uh, and those Georgia women also. Oh, boy, I love the accent. Ooh. Yeah, there you are. Yeah. 1900, Secretary of State John Hay announced the open door policy to prompt trade with China. So all the way back in 1900. Uh, That's uh, right. Under 120 McKinley. years we've been trying to deal with these guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and it was really interesting because um, China, and most of the Asian countries at the turn of the century uh, were city states. They, they weren't really nationalized in any way. So what the open door policy was, to put simply, was city treaties, or as they called them back then, treaty ports. So uh, this gentleman that worked with uh, McKinley before he got whacked, um, yeah, they put together this concept of independent you know, uh, treaty ports in China, Japan, and Korea. Next. All right. Well, next is uh, <laughs> Montana State News, Fox News, and uh, <laughs> Brooke Foster Weather, and, hey. and a couple other things. So we'll be back. It's January yeah. 2nd. Happy New Year, everyone. We'll be back right after these important words. Stay tuned. 25 minutes for the top of the hour. It's Thursday, January 2nd, not 2019, it's 2020. Uh, do you think there's going to be a lot of vision jokes all year long, Shane? Are we going to be talking oh, yeah. about 2020? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we're looking ahead, uh, you know. Or, I, I'm uh, just waiting for Trump to pick it up, right? Yeah, like, right. You know, here we go, 2020 <laughs> vision on this person, whoever that might be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You are blind. You are blind to the bat. There you, you are. I can't imagine who it'll be. From our text line, 478-8298, we were talking about uh, people moving to Georgia from <laughs> the, yeah. all the states. And uh, why is it that Democrats flee Democrat states and move to conservative states? Why don't they stay in their own screwed-up states? Well, that's the problem, you know. They, 
Uh, one of the things I did, I moved here from California, but I sure as heck didn't want to bring California here. I wanted to come in here and uh, be a Montana, not a not a transplant. So I don't know how long you have to live here to be a true Montanan, but. Well, and the other thing, too, is that they, they moved to, you know, conservative states because they're in much better shape in most cases. Well, and that's. And they have, you know, less taxes, and regulations, and, yeah, you know, they're sort of open for business, right? Not, yeah. Now, that's not the case in Montana, as we've talked, but. Yeah. Well, in, uh, on this date in 1935, uh, Bruno Hopman went on trial in Flemington, uh, Flemington New Jersey. Mm -hmm. on charges of kidnapping and murdering the instant infant son of Charles and Ann Lindbergh. He was found guilty and executed. And you can uh, see some of the cross-examination of him on YouTube. Uh, That's right. Yeah. It's, uh, it was happily actually filmed. Very good. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So uh, quite a lot of people thought he was railroaded um, and uh, wasn't the guilty party. But, um, you know, um, as you'll see... <laughs> The justice wasn't exactly the same way then as it is now when, no, when no. they're talking to this guy on uh, on no. the witness stand. So, um, yeah, it's a different deal then. So, But it's a, fa it's a fascinating watch because it does it give is. you an understanding yep. Yep. of practical jurisprudence. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. That, that's what it was, practical. We're going to get to the bottom of this. Okay. We think you're guilty, okay. so, you know, we're just waiting for you to admit to it because you should because you are. Boom. Oh. What, but I'm not. Yes, you are. <laughs> well, in 1965, the uh, New York Jets signed University of Alabama quarterback Joe Namath for a reported $400,000 in 1965 dollars, Shane. Man, I remember That's that. Right. That was unheard of, getting not, that kind it, of a signing bonus. I mean, that was like 2 or $3 million today or something. It was off the, per, off the charts. Permission to make an analogy. Yeah. Okay, my analogy is that this young man, Joseph William Namath, was to football what Muhammad Ali was to fighting. You know, Broadway Joe bragged about uh, winning the, you know, the first uh, Super Bowl that three. they were going to win. Number three. And they did. Or, number three. But yeah. it was the first, like, AFC, NFC football thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, yeah. And the point is, is that he said they're going to win, and they went out and won. They did, but you know, yeah. you know, and it, but and it was a good game. I remember watching it. Yeah, you know? sixteen to seven, if I believe, right. if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah, so. it, and and it was just so cool because you know he's a young guy, and oh you yeah, know, and, then, and then you watch the bowl games yesterday, and you go, well, they're all young guys. Well, you know? yeah, but, that's true. <laughs> but back then, you and I were young too, so we yeah. thought of them as young guys, right? <laughs> that's yeah, right. You know. Yeah, I was thinking this guy's making four hundred thousand, and I'm sitting sitting around <laughs> making nothing. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Trying actually, to be responsible, go to school. Ah. Actually, I was on my way to Vietnam in '65. Oh, so. that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, in 1974, on this date, uh, President Richard Nixon signed legislation requiring states to limit highway speeds to 55 miles per hour. And we remember Which, that uh, happened under right. Carter as well. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and you know, for all the for all the unfortunate uh, legacy that he will live with, you know, he was a pretty dy dynamic president, which we talked about, right? Mm -hmm. He created four new agencies, um, the FDA and uh, yeah. the, the EPA, and I mean, he was a very active president in in that he did want to make a difference, but mm -hmm. he taped it all. So yeah. <laughs> It all caught up with him yeah. <laughs> and made a difference. <laughs> well, for for those of you who weren't here uh, during the uh, Carter years or the Reagan years, uh, uh, yeah. Montana revolted against that 55-mile speed limit because, right. you know, I mean, we're a big state. It takes two days to fly across it by jet. You know, so we, we can't uh, we can't be going 55 miles an hour on our, our road, so... Uh, what they did was uh, they made all speeding tickets five bucks, and they didn't go on your record. So you could just give the patrolman five bucks when you pulled you over, mm -hmm. and uh, you'd be you'd be on your way pretty quickly. Right. And then after that, of course, we got rid of the speed limit altogether. We had no speed limit in uh, Montana for a while. Yeah, for a while, it was reasonable and prudent. Uh, is what. The, what it was so so yeah you could uh you could go racing across montana pretty fast and uh, not be uh 
not be in trouble for it. So. Well, regional and prudent is on the, the interstate because you're lucky yeah. that you have, you know, and beautiful interstates both north and south across mm -hmm. your state. Yeah. But, you know, the frontage roads or the original yeah, roads. Yeah, those the, still had speed limits. Yeah, we didn't, yeah, we didn't have no that. speed limit in town. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let, let's make this sort of like, you know, clear, right? But yeah. anyway. Well, no, so this is the precedent that yeah. uh, Trump has taken advantage of. Let's mm -hmm. bring this up because it's relevant to today. All right. So this whole legislation is a precedent for today that he can deny states funding because that's what they did. Part of the legislation he signed was if you don't follow federal law, we can cut back on benefits the federal government provides your state. Mm -hmm. So that that's that's what uh, Trump is taking advantage of in in these sanctuary city issues and stuff yeah. like that today. Well, I think it's unconstitutional for you to withhold aid from anybody for anything. Um, for the I I think it was illegal and unconstitutional for them to impose a fifty five mile speed limit. That should be up to the states what they want to do. That's correct, yeah. I, but I don't think it's been heard by before the Supreme Court. I, it, it's gone mm -hmm. back and forth between the federal government and states when they sort of want to harass them. Yeah. But that, you know, you know, so we'll see what happens because that ninth court, you know, that that ninth court you're in, you know, yeah. they, they ninth you know, circuit, they, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. ninth circuit. All right, we got to take a short break here. We'll be back in two minutes, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. Fifteen minutes for the top of the hour. It's Thursday, January second, twenty twenty. Thirty-three degrees outside. Uh, Mike McCormick will join us uh, at seven o'clock uh, for his uh, weekly visit, and also tomorrow at seven thirty, uh, Angie Ripple, who is the uh, editor of uh, Bozeman Magazine, will be here, and we'll get the uh, voter, uh, the uh, Bozeman Reader's Choice poll. Uh, where we uh, fell into place on that. So uh, stay tuned for that at 7.30 tomorrow. Uh, also, if you missed our parade on Monday, hey, it's online at uh, KMMSAM.com or on your smartphone app at AM 1450 KMMS. Uh, you can listen to our uh, parade uh, commercial-free, uninterrupted, much like the Rose Parade was on uh, uh, yesterday. And uh, happy to uh, watch that. Uh, that's definitely a parade. Uh, the Macy's Parade is not a parade. Uh, it's just a, I don't know what it is. It's just a, <laughs> it's a loser. <laughs> right, Shane? Yeah. It's yeah. a balloon show. Yeah, it's a loser. All right, from our text line, 478-8298. Tom, you are definitely a true Montanan, and uh, you're not a Democrat. Okay. <laughs> That'll work for me. Okay. Uh, the $5 ticket was called a conservation citation. That was a brilliant way to get around the stupidity of Carter. Uh, no speed limit. A Volkswagen Beetle going 90 miles an hour would get a ticket for restless, <laughs> reckless driving. <laughs> <laughs> probably true <laughs> or recklessly being on the road <laughs> yeah on this day in uh, 1876 the high temperature for washington dc was 71 degrees so how do you like that so that's amazing yeah so that's a that'll catch us up on our uh, text line uh, today so uh well, let's see, uh, finishing up on uh, this day in history, we've got a couple other things we've got to talk about. Uh, in 1981, police in Sheffield, England, uh, arrested Peter Sutcliffe, who uh, confessed to being the Yorkshire Ripper, the serial killer oh. of 13 women back in 1981. Not, the, uh, not Jack the Ripper, but the uh, Yorkshire Ripper. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's, it's very strange. It's a complicated issue in, in a modern society of someone that kills more than three people. They you know, are determined and, and profiled as a serial killer. Mm -hmm. If you go on the website on the FBI for the United States, yeah. uh, they will tell you that at any given time, like even today right now, they're chasing at least 28 serial killers in the U.S. Oh, I don't doubt that. Yeah. You know, so, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's, yeah. it, it, it's not something you hear about. So. For us bringing it up, it's uh, one of those things that you want to do because, you know, at this time of the season or any season, watch your children. Know where they're going. If they're mm -hmm. going somewhere, get a phone number, get an address, you know, it, it, especially today. Mm -hmm. you know, it's it's very dangerous. Protect and watch your little ones because no one else will. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's sad we live and we've morphed into that society. 
But uh, that's, unfortunately, that's the world we live in. Yeah. So rather than talk about this, this guy from mm. <laughs> England yeah. will put out a special <laughs> service message instead. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 1991 mm. on this date, Sharon Pratt Dixon was sworn in as mayor of Washington, D.C., becoming the first African-American woman to head a city of Washington size and prominence. That's right. Third mayor, uh, District mm-hmm. of Columbia, 1991 to 1995. Mm-hmm. And uh, remarkably uh, unef- ineffective, as most mayors of uh, the District of Columbia have been. Interestingly enough, they have a city council, but the city council reports to, you know who do? The House of Representatives. The House of Representatives oh, right, of the United yeah. States Congress oversees the, mm-hmm. city, the District of Columbia and provides their money and the budget for the city. So the the mayor is somewhat constrained, and so is the city council because of that interesting concept, which we'll be talking about a lot this year when mm-hmm. city-states come back to America, you know, because it's unfortunate, but uh, tyranny has landed on your shore. Yeah. So there you go. Boy, don't know. Yeah. Uh, let's see, uh, from our, uh, from our text line, uh, four, seven, eight, eight, two, nine, eight Macy's parade is a very expensive mess that taxpayers no longer need to subsidize. <laughs> I would, yeah. I don't know how much Macy puts into that parade <laughs> dollars, uh, yeah. dollars and cents or, uh, whatever, but, uh, uh, so I don't know. Uh, do you do local news uh, like all the accidents over the last couple of days and wondering why a coroner was at the Manhattan apartments yesterday? Well, I don't have anything on the uh, uh, Manhattan at the moment, uh, but uh, maybe during the break of the top of the hour we can look. And uh, we'll be doing local stuff at 8 o'clock because we got Mike McCormick uh, showing up at 7. So we'll, uh, we'll be chatting hey, with Mike. Ooh. And uh, all of that. So that'll be coming up in about 10 minutes or so. So um, stay tuned uh, for that. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Also, uh, methane gas explosion at the Sago Mine in West Virginia. Trapped 13 miners underground for more than 40 hours. Only one survived on this date in 2006. That's right, and and mining and particularly coal have always been a dangerous uh, um, and job, mm-hmm. and and we remember the one that w- was chilly, right? Yeah. W- or was it w- with the thirty miners and they they saved them? Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. They tried to get in there and uh, whatever. The um, the break at the top of the hour is automatic. Okay. So <laughs> I appreciate. <laughs> Plus, we've got eight. We got so nine. We got nine yeah. minutes to go. <laughs> oh, I, I thought there was a break at five fifty. No, uh, no. Uh, we uh, I combined the two because they were both a minute each, and I wasn't going to take two breaks. Ah, uh-huh. right. you didn't each, give me so a heads up. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm sorry. Here, I should have done here. that. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm but here, I appreciate you. I'm sitting here committing suicide and slashing my I, throat. I know you're telling me we got to take a break, and you're and you're on the case, man. I like that. So keep me honest. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Go on. What's that? Oh no, okay. we're city news. City news now. Here well, we go. 2008. <laughs> we still got one left. 2008. Wow, you're doing it all today, boy. You're special. Oil prices soared to a hundred dollars a barrel for the first time. They went up to 140, I believe. Yep, and, and, and by uh, 2013, that's right. Yeah. And as we predicted, uh, that was in June, uh, I believe, of 2008. And as we predicted, uh, it was back at $35 a barrel by December, six months later. Yeah, and 2014 was just a mm-hmm. terrible year for the oil industry, particularly in the United States. Yeah. And it hasn't really recovered that well in the last five years still. Mm-hmm. It's only marginally gone up 50%. Uh, problem is, is that uh, this was all a result of not a lack of oil, just a production issue, as a, or 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 transportation issue. Yeah, um, you know, it's never really there, there's never been an oil shortage. There's just a failure to produce enough because of, I mean, mm-hmm. look at this year. We've talked about it. I mean, oh, can you believe this year the world has broken a hundred million barrels a day consumption of oil? Yeah. Wow. And the U.S. is mm-hmm. back to twenty million barrels a day from 18 high back then that's right back in 2008 we were at 18 million a day that the u.s mm-hmm. consumed now you're at 20 
So uh, the world is, excuse the expression, sucking up to oil, baby. Yeah, that's for sure. All right. From our text line, uh, we were talking about the Macy's Parade and the uh, the Rose Parade. Rose Parade was a pretty good parade. I would say it's probably second oh. only to our parade uh, that we had, you know, so... Uh, well, for, nothing compares. Oh, no, you know. I know. It's pretty hard to compare that. So anyway, from our text line, 478-8298, I never saw a parade with so many wannabe convicts, liars, and socialists. How did you ever assemble such an elect- electric group <laughs> of subversive individuals for your parade? Good job. <laughs> well, <laughs> well uh, hey, listen, we want to remind everyone that's, that, that appreciates what we do <laughs> is that the last person that sat in before, you know, we did the parade yeah. with notes because we supported him was Obama for president, like that guy out of Chicago, right? Like yeah, we, we, yeah. we, you know, we sat down with Obama and say, we're doing this parade and we want to be politically correct. So, right. you know, that, that's, that's, that, that's the reach we've had. Okay. That's Since right. 2008. Yeah. That was yeah. it all the way back to yeah. <laughs> back then. So, <laughs> so, all right. Well, yeah. Uh, well, the, the truth is uh, nobody else wanted those people for their parade. So, so they obviously gravitated to us. And, uh, you know, as as they always say, uh, you know, uh, any publicity is good publicity. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter whether it's good or bad. That's it's, right. They were happy to they were happy uh, to uh, uh, climb uh, up on our floats and uh, have a have just, just a. a just a wonderful time. <laughs> Just as long as they're talking about you. That's oh. right. That's yeah. absolutely right. So <laughs> it was pretty good time was had by all. And as oh, I say, if you good. missed our parade, uh, you can catch it on our replay at camsam.com. Just click on Tom and Shane's podcast, and uh, there's a link there. It'll take you over to where all our shows are. This is our 300th show today. And uh, we over the weekend, we also passed... Uh, last weekend, uh, we passed uh, 2,500 downloads, so we're at 25, um, where are we at? 2,532 right now, and uh, as I mentioned, today is our 300th episode uh, since uh, Shane and I have been rocking and rolling here on uh, AM 1450, so uh, we're happy about that, and uh, we really appreciate you guys uh, supporting us as you have, so. Indeed. I mean, how cool. We are so special. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think we are. You yeah, think so? We are. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> well, my wife thinks I am. But <laughs> oh, well, I think you're special, too, and I'm well, your friend. Well, there you are. You are my friend. Absolutely. And, and as your friend, I'm happy for you. Well, I'm happy for both of us. So. There you go. <laughs> Tomorrow at 7.30, Angie Ripple, uh, Bozeman Magazine will be here, and we'll get the results of the Bozeman Magazine reader poll. And uh, we'll see uh, how we did and how you guys did because we're all in this together. So um, we'll uh, we'll find out what was going on there. So there is no uh, discernible birthday today other than Sally Rand, uh, who is American actress and fan dancer. <laughs> well, you and I are probably <laughs> and Clint are probably the only ones who remember who Sally Rand is. Uh, but uh, yeah, she I danced with these big fans, uh, you know, to yes. cover herself up and. Uh, you know, so back uh, back in the day, she was born in on this date in 1904 and uh, died at the age of 75 in 1979. So I don't know if she was buried with her feathers or not, but who who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I wish I wish I had that info, but uh, <laughs> but great. we don't. Love it. Let's take a phone call here before we got to go to the break. Caller, you are on the morning soapbox with Tom and Shane. What's up? I knew you guys, and um, uh, this president that the Democrats are setting is just incredibly dangerous. I mean, to say that the president has committed high crimes and misdemeanors um, within a phone call? I don't <laughs> no, know. Isn't that great? I love it. You better be careful because they're coming after you next for calling in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No kidding. Um, I, I mean, what's to stop? You know, the next Congress and the next Congress after that, it's like, oh, we don't like this president, so uh, let's find something. Let's just say he uh, jaywalked. Uh, you know, it's just yeah. crazy. I mean, the precedent that they're setting is ridiculous and it's dangerous because it's, it's – mm-hmm. I'm speechless. It's yeah. just crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, we appreciate you calling. You know why? 
because congratulations, right. it's the year of the woman. And 100 oh, years boy. ago, women's suffrage overcame, yeah. and you finally got to vote August 28th. There you go, baby. Enjoy, yeah. enjoy. And and not only that, but you're our first call of the year. Okay. And a woman. So a there's woman all calling. these things around you. <laughs> That's now. You're right. famous. So. You're globally oh. famous today. <laughs> and, and you didn't even give us your first name. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> what a great answer! That was very good. That was that was truly awesome. That's right. Well, hey, and we... it, it, you know, with Nancy Pelosi, this she's changing all the rules, and you can't do that. No, you can't. I mean, they're changing it from um, all the procedures that they had for Bill Clinton. Mm-hmm. President oh, yeah. Trump hasn't gotten. Uh, holding on to the articles of impeachment instead of sending them over right away. I mean, who does she think she is? Yeah, well, <laughs> oh, she wants uh, you to... want to know. You want to know who she thinks she is? She thinks well, she's smarter that? than you because yeah. she doesn't think you know what she's doing. Yeah, I swear oh, yeah, to you. Like I'm telling that. you right now. No, I'm. T- that's what this. Is. She just thinks like with the health care, pass the bill, and then we'll tell you what's in it. <laughs> there yeah. See how good this woman like, is? You, uh, you got to call back more often. Please, please. <laughs> All right, I've, I've got to go. I'm up against the clock. Hey, thanks for the call. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. <laughs> All right. All right, we got to uh, pay some bills here or get some bills paid to, to us, <laughs> whatever we got to do. Mike McCormick will be in here next. And uh, since we don't have a disclaimer, you're going to hear about, uh, I don't know, maybe five seconds of dead air here because I've got to say this is News Radio AM 1450 KMMS in Bozeman, 1340 KPRK in Livingston, and of course at fine computers around the world. This is where Montana talks. So. We are now legal with the FCC, so I'm excited. So Mike McCormick is in the house. We'll be chatting with him right after the news. Stay tuned. Welcome to Preserving Your Wealth with Mike McCormick, where we talk about smart ways to invest and preserve your money. Mike is a registered investment advisor with McCormick Financial Advisors in Bozeman, Montana. As an independent fiduciary, Mike does not receive commissions from any of the products or investments mentioned on this program. Consult a professional before making any investment decision. You can find old shows archived at McCormickFinancialAdvisors.com. Learn, participate, interact. All right, and the aforementioned Mike McCormick is in the house. How are you doing, man? Hey, New Year, Happy New Year, everybody. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> 2020. Yeah. Oh, it's going to take me about six months to get used to writing that, I think. I know, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Here you I go, like Tom. I, 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 Happy New Year, Shane. Hey, welcome in the house, Jiggy. I am in, yeah. Uh, you know, in terms of um, where we are, where we've been, I feel pretty good. I don't know. Just stay away from mirrors uh, and uh, keep a full ibuprofen bottle and the future's rosy, right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's the key key to happiness in this coming year for sure yeah well well that trade agreements yeah that and trade agreements yeah. you yeah. know that's going to be that's going to be the big story of the year and my forecast we can make some forecasts i suppose yeah there's no Why consequence not? to it right yeah, I, yeah. You, you heard my disclaimer you can't nothing who cares yeah. right <laughs> Um, we don't have to be right. I think that I think that the uh, the Chinese forecast is going to be in, uh, uh, excuse me, the Chinese trade agreement is going to be elusive and uh, not definitive this year. And I think that uh, our reversion of the NAFTA will be, um, mm-hmm. which is already pretty much pretty much happening, I suppose. So yeah. so that's a that's a that's an easy one. But I don't see, I still don't see China uh, playing ball the way that uh, that Trump wants them to. Um, yeah. I, I see a communist country that. Um, is playing long, long ball, longer than one more term in office, uh, and I see them mm-hmm. as having the ability to starve their their citizens for generations. If that means the, no that's problem. what we need to do for the win. Yeah. So, um, I, I'm I'm skeptical about this January 15th. I just heard a, a report coming in on Bloomberg where allegedly, right? We I don't I'm not getting news. Yeah. To, to Mike, the, the allegedly is that the Chinese don't even have a, a Chinese written up version of whatever it is they're supposed to sign. Uh, they publicly haven't acknowledged anything about a, a trade uh, phase one agreement. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll, we'll see what's news and we'll see what's what's uh, what's not um, yeah. as we come along. But the market will, I think, become desensitized to it uh, as it does with many things. Brexit, for example, Brexit still is 
uh, a, a disaster uh, happening, I suppose, in slow motion over there. Um, depending on your view of things, I, I, I don't see it's going to be a benefit to England to leave the club, especially uh, where they're sitting right now. And so the Chinese agreement thing, I think that we'll end up getting desensitized to that, focusing more on our own election um, and probably caring less uh, with what the substance of it is. China's, it, they're going to consume soybeans. They're going to buy wheat. Uh, they're going to have an insatiable appetite for it. Um, and they'll find places and markets to buy it. But eventually, mm-hmm. you know, that, okay, so let's say they buy all of Brazil's wheat. Well, the wheat that Brazil was selling to other people is now going to be bought from the U.S. So, you know, it'll be okay in some regard. Mm-hmm. That's my sort of, it, it'll be okay review. But we haven't yeah. talked about forecasts for this year. No, not yet. And we can get into that, I suppose. Sure. We don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to rush things this morning. <laughs> well, I don't think anything's going to happen in the first quarter. Uh, because uh, between now and... Are you and, talking about trade deals? Or are you talking about anything? I'm talking about anything. I'm talking about the economy in general. Whoa, that, boy. That oh, it's that it's going to stay It's gonna stay okay, but at the end of March, we'll have Super Tuesday will be done, mm-hmm. and that's when the fair will start. So April on, um, I, I look for a downturn in the market because of whoever rises the, the to the fear forefront. machine they're not going to have a brokered convention uh that ain't going to happen so yeah it is no it isn't yeah it is no it isn't i'm sorry it's not <laughs> i don't know what you mean by a brokered convention well, i'm new a brokered here convention means that nobody will have enough delegates to win win on the, in the first win on the first ballot oh gotcha ballot. So then once once the first ballot's done, then it's up for everybody. It doesn't matter how many delegates they it have. It releases all the delegates. Yeah, it releases all the delegates. They can vote for whoever, whoever they want to. So. Or anyone can stand up. Yeah. But like, but if anybody does a um does a super Tuesday call, you know. Wait, 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 wait. You can't get <laughs> off that easily. If you're so adamant it won't be an open or brokered convention, yeah. who's gonna get who's gonna win then? Well, I don't know who's going to win, but I know somebody's going to oh, go. Oh, come on! To... You can't, you can't dodge the question. All right, my okay. my bet. Top three. My, you can oh, use my three. disclaimer too, okay. Tom, if you want. Yeah, uh, my Top bet three. would be a Buddha judge. <laughs> You're so funny. You just created <laughs> love. I'm so glad we're being recorded. This yeah, is... me too. <laughs> I am too. I am too. <laughs> he won't. He won't even make it. He won't even make it to the VP stand. I don't know. I don't know, man. I I think you're I think you're overestimating the uh, the uh, youth of this country and the American people and John Kennedy and uh, oh please B- yeah. Hillary and BB Hillary and and, and no. Bloomberg's billions. There you go. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah, they're broke. They have no money. The Democrat. Did you see Bernie though? He's yanking it, baby. He's raised almost ninety million dollars. Spent most of it, of course. And Buttigieg uh, led the way in uh, uh, money for the last quarter. Thank you very much. Yeah, but neither of them get the nomination. Well, <laughs> we'll see, won't we? <laughs> oh, pff, come on, serious. <laughs> I like the way you stay confident, Tom. I'm a, a, a confident this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, I've, well, you, hey, I've lived. He, he was, he was, right, he was right. He was confident right up to election day. Who's hey. currently leading in the polls right now, Shane? Who's currently got the well, Trump? Trump. Sure, understood. We're talking. We're not Biden. talking about that side. Biden's we're talking leading. about the other yeah, side. Right? Biden, oh, Biden. Biden's still the. Uh, but you, neither of you guys think that he's going to be. He's going to no. be the nominee. No, I don't think so. Okay, right. We're talking. We're no. talking about the demolition party. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, I, I, I agree. It, it, it hasn't made a lot of sense yeah. uh, recently. Yeah. Um, so uh, my, my second choice would be Klobuchar. Um, just because it's hard to pronounce. That's Buttigieg, your, your, yeah. your, you're into the people Buttigieg that it's hard to pronounce. And Klobuchar. Yeah, yeah. We can't have either one. That would be my <laughs> second choice. Yeah. 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 They're not going to vote for Biden. They're not going to vote for Bernie. So what's, what do you got left? You got the younger uh, you got the woman, and you got the younger Hillary uh, and Bloomberg. Please, what a, ma- what a magic duo! Just think about it. <laughs> no, no, I won't. I won't think about it. <laughs> uh, so great, I love it. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, you know, I'm, you know, I'm only doing this just to get on you. you I know, know that. I know I you know. are, and that's good radio. So get okay. on me, man. So, Mikey, <laughs> come on, give us three predictions. Three people you think could win the Democratic. <laughs> No, come it's, on, Mike. It's the Democrat. It's so the let, Democrat. Let me just There's nothing preface. Democratic about it. I am so good at not paying attention to this. I'm not sure I could name three candidates. Really? I mean, yeah, it's, I'm. Okay. It's embarrassing how I I turn the page. I it's noise. I don't. 
I believe okay. Trump's going to so win, so I don't put any of my time into this. Uh, you um, know, the did, Bernie Sanders is too old. Yeah, uh, I, I just can't imagine. Uh, and and what's weird is he, he resonates with some of the most liberal people out there. Some It's remarkable he's been able to raise so much money because, you know, yeah. sometimes the people that want the redistribution of wealth are the ones that are looking to get it redistributed. So they don't have a lot to true. donate. Yeah. Um, and if you look at Biden, it, that's like milk toast with the vanilla seasoning taken away. I mean, it's it's hard to get excited about anything there. Um, I wasn't aware Hillary was in the race. Yeah. Um, but apparently she might make a cameo. Um, these two people that Tom's got that are difficult to pronounce, you know, <laughs> charismatic, young. Yeah. I th- I think I'm in Tom's camp. I got to tell That's you, it. this is yeah. again with no knowledge really yeah. about what's going on. <laughs> oh wow! Uh, okay. So yeah, it, Tom, Tom, I got. I'm statistically, I've got a better Tom. rate of being right than the people that know more. Right? Okay. All right. What do you got, Jane? Pelosi. What about her? I'm gonna get up at the convention and say, "Pick me." Yeah. Not a chance. Too old. <laughs> if we're not gonna elect old white guys, we're not gonna elect an old white woman. <laughs> Got to be a woman. I'm telling you, the only way that ever Paul Bajar, Paul Bajar, or Tulsi oh Gabbard. Tulsi Post- Gabbard. Oh, that would be great. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. If I had to look, my, at, what, if I had to look at a Democrat soft. for four years, Tulsi would be the one I want to look at. Yeah, my voice would go soft on that. She huh? was surfing. Did you see her surfing in her yeah. surfing outfit, man? Oh, oh my goodness. Ooh. I'm not participating in this. She's uh, yeah, she's hot, man. <laughs> Okay, let's get to the uh, importance of Mikey being here. Come on, let's talk currencies. What do you think? You're seeing some strong changes this last 10 days. I would even defer to you on currencies too, Shane. I am focused on the individual person out here. And the individual investor is not playing currencies. And they're not investing in, you know, dollar-denominated international funds. And they're not too concerned. They're not in the IMF. You know, like, (laughs) oh, how many yawn will my, my, you know, $20 bill get me today? You know. (laughs) But I don't discount what you know, Shane, which is that it does move the big money dollars. Yeah. Um, you know, one theme that I keep hearing on these year-end stories, and now we're in decade-end stories, mm-hmm. right? I mean, this yeah, has been a spectacular exactly. decade it has, yeah. for making money passively in the stock market. It's been tremendous. 4,000% on and less, Netflix. And, right, right. <laughs> And, and, yeah. and it's all been in Jack Bogle's lap. It's all been mm-hmm. in Vanguard passive funds. Mm-hmm. It's been in buy and hold. It's been Go long on it and forget about it. it of course, it's mm-hmm. been technology, technology, technology. That's the revolution yeah. that we're in. Mm-hmm. But the stories keep coming out about how hedge funds, these fancy bigwigs that we always envision have the inside news, the people that are doing the long, short funds, the absolute return funds, the alternative strategies, the PhDs and quants, they are getting their butts kicked. They are so far off of the mark of the S&P, much less trying to make gains on it, that it is a testament to their marketing strategy that they still have clients uh and really they're alive Uh, this is my my notion they're alive because these big investors whether they're super ultra wealthy or whether they're sovereign funds or whether they're pensions they're making so much money in the vanguard style that they need to reallocate they always say you know sell your winners buy your losers so for the past 10 years they've been selling netflix and apple and going investing in these opaque sort of investment strategies that make big fees for the hedge funds, but haven't returned them a stinking dime hardly. Mm -hmm. Uh, So just if you're the average person, again, that's who I like to try and talk to out there. And you're feeling grumpy that maybe you, this, this boom has left you uh, back to, you know, where you are or haven't participated and so on. Well, know that if you're a big wig, fat cat in wall street, uh, you're probably not much further along either, and you're probably looking at some job cuts uh, for your new year New Year gift out there. Um, I have I have friends, uh, colleagues that still believe, but they won't show me the numbers that that turn the head. So going forward, what's going to happen? I think all things revert to the mean. I mean, mm-hmm. nothing per, nothing goes in perpet, perpetuity. Uh, right now, we're having valuations that are too high. Things are expensive. Real estate won't always be super expensive. There'll be a reversion. But the prediction that I have this year is that despite everybody wanting to have it really be volatile, I think it's going to be milk toast. I think that there's just not a, and that's just boring, right? I I think we all, we understand the trajectory we're on. Hmm. U.S. is strong. Uh, We've got. I disagree. I have a total name for this decade. Oh, you do? The Um, Roaring Twenties, baby. The Roaring (laughs) Twenties. The Roaring Twenties. Uh, we have a population growth that hasn't been this low in the U.S. since 1918. 
I know it's incredible, isn't it? Mm. Demographics, baby. That's all. That's, the whole thing of the 21st century, you got to pay, pay pay attention. Yep. You cannot just lower your interest rates uh, and make money easy when you don't have growth. And growth comes from more mouths. It comes from more bodies, more people making stuff, more people thinking, more people innovating. Yeah. Uh, Japan is not the growth story that we want to be, and that's the population dynamic that we're going towards. Um, so that is where I think that we're going to be offsetting our you know, our position of dominance. If things are going well, we're in a good spot. Uh, we've got... Um, a bright future. I don't see big changes happening for things, but we can only go so far. We just, we don't have the fuel to get going beyond this. Uh, we might, uh, my fear is that we try and do things to try and artificially create this fuel, things like lowering the rates or big fiscal stimulus or more tax breaks, things that will borrow from the future to, to stimulate growth. Now. Um, I, I, I think that there's going to be a limit to that in this decade uh, of coming to the reality that, Oh, we're kind of like Europe, you know, France, as much as we like to make fun of it. Uh, they have long summer holidays. They have yeah. really good cheese <laughs> and, That's wine. and wine and yeah. beautiful women. And, you know, it's, yeah. it's kind of an enviable lifestyle. If you look at it in that regard, there you are. And we're kind of, we're kind of on our way there. That's my, that's my jest. Okay. We got to take a quick break here. Uh, from our text line, four, seven, eight, eight, two, nine, eight. Wow. No wonder they don't give you the job the way you talk about women. So I don't know what I said about women. I... No, they're talking about me. They're talking about me. Oh, okay. Well, that may be. All right. Well, I'm offended. I'm I'm offended too. So as long as it's Shane, <laughs> we'll be right back. 22 minutes after the hour, Thursday, January 2nd, 2020, Mike McCormick, uh, half half man, half uh, investor. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the house. Shame and Tom is on the line in Cantaloupes. And uh, Tom Eagle up your morning mayor. And this is the KMMS Morning Soapbox. If you're just joining us. And uh, we're, well, we're talking a little bit about uh, the future. But, uh, well, let's go to the past. Okay, let's go well, to the past. Well, one thing I want to do is, you know, we have to review year and review how investments did. And, and I, I look at things in sectors. I, I, I'm not an individual stock picker. Uh, the statistics are too too poor for that, but I do believe that there's intelligent design in terms of what sector of the economy uh, that is going to do well. What's where to invest your money? And if you look at the whole economy, you can divide things up from big companies to small companies. Well, that's how Morningstar did it, and it it hasn't shown to be very effective in my in my view. Uh, when you look at the style boxes that they like to show you, there's not a whole lot of differentiation really between the small and large uh, and the value and the growth. I mean. Yes, large growth has outperformed, but you did just fine anywhere. But you really see differences when you break things out in terms of the sectors, the types of businesses that they do. Technology, no doubt, that is the leader out there. So year to date for 2019, the returns 50%, 50% for investing in the Vanguard or Spider or First Trust or whatever exchange-traded fund, Schwab's got one too, that would just allocate your money amongst the largest technology companies all the way down to some of the smaller ones with smaller bits, 50% for doing nothing. This is not normal. This will not happen. This might not happen again in my lifetime in terms of, of a one-year return on the backs of a decade like this to finish it up. Next in line, huge drop down to 33% return. That's communi communication services. Uh, this would basically be a splinter group of the technology sectors, the Facebooks and things that are providing connectivity financials at 32 percent that's a heck of a win that we didn't really talk much about this last year mm -hmm. the financials were doing well they came on strong in the second half of the year once the rate situation looked a bit firmer uh s p on average 31 percent so what that means is that the s p 500 on average if you just got the 500 most commonly held u.s companies you're about 30 percent up uh, now there's a fee that's associated with that and so when you look at your returns if you're in the high 20s and you have some diversification that means yeah, you're right in there. Uh, industrials, 30%. Consumer discretionary, 28%. We end up in the 28% a bit with consumer staples, real estate. That's pretty interesting. Consumer staples are a defensive play, and you're right up there in the in the 28% the returns. We drop down to 25% with utilities, materials, 24%. Healthcare, 21% gain. And energy at the bottom, back of the bus, Still with 11% gain. We saw oil go from 45 to $60, 6174 is what the print was here. So we had a situation where everything was up. And the only thing that I can find 
that would have lost people money on my little cheat sheet right here last year is natural gas. As if you you were in a natural gas, you had it, you had lumps on your head. You had a bad year. You yeah. had it, you had it, which, uh, you know, the, the studies show is that we don't mind having bad years so long as everybody else around us has worse years. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you, if you had, if you had 11% return, some years you might be feeling pretty clever. This year you're feeling wah, wah, left out. And now going forward, we're not going to have a return like this. We're not. Does it mean that you should go to cash? I think that right now, it's not a bad time to be hoarding a little bit. It's not a bad time to be waiting for a little something change, something to change. But boy, really, the chances are most people, if you look at you know big, small, big, you know mm. people around you making money, yeah, their money machine is really strong, and they're still buying stuff. They have to. You can't. You can't put it all in cash. You can't put it all. You got to put some in real estate. You got to buy. Uh, you got to go ahead and hold your nose and add to that portfolio. There's an upward pressure on all these things that's still going to be around for a while. All right. From our text line, 478-8298. Good morning, gentlemen. I'd like your sage advice on the 5G phenomenon. I've retained three financial planners, and without exception, they're recommending I invest a good portion of our rather substantial, it's seven figures portfolio, in 5G technology. They suggest I invest in companies that manufacture parts that support 5G technology, like semiconductors, to companies that will most benefit from 5G. Also, they say investors should be on the support services necessary to maintain the 5G network. In short, my advisors uh, act like the uh, the uh, right 5G stocks are incredibly lucrative business opportunity. What do you say, Big Kahuna, Mike, and Shane? Thanks for the sound advice you always give. And Mike, what are your preferences on sectors going forward, financial, technology, EFTs, and dividend-paying value stocks. That's a that's a show on its own. Right, it is right well, well-written question. <laughs> so sophisticated listener, even. Well, I know uh, Shane's talked a lot about five G in the past. Uh, certainly, uh, Shane, what do you think five G? Uh, where do you go there? Do you would you uh, would you say? Okay, two things. Um, Make sure that your financial advisor is keeping track monthly of the 5G build-out. Uh, the U.S. is going to require about 650,000 postings for it to work. T-Mobile is already advertising it. So that, that's the first thing. If they are expanding it at the rate that they claim they would, yes, it's a, it's a good consideration. Number two, um, streaming. Whoever you think is going to stream the best, my call is Disney, best streaming stock out there. Do not be in cables. Do not be in networks. Do not be in any other kind of television entertainment. You only want to buy entertainment that has a library or, you know, has something that they can rent or sell like Disney with the 20th Century Fox and their Disney library. Um, number three, the, it, it's very difficult to make a determination of which companies to go in on the hardware side unless you have a clear understanding of what hardware they're buying. Uh, the best hardware with regard to 5G is actually coming out of South Korea, not China, as everyone's talking about. But the squander there is that if China does go towards 5G, which they claim they're going to, watch this thing accelerate. So there's my advice. All right. We'll get Mike's take on that when we come back. And um... Apple, Verizon, AT&T, meat and potatoes. <laughs> They've got the cash go. to acquire <laughs> anything that's productive and profitable don't, right. don't get fancy all right we'll be back right after these important words stay tuned 25 minutes for the top of the hour mike mccormick mccormick financial advisors in the house uh tommy Golop, your morning mayor shane matobin half man half amazing in van well he's not in vancouver he's in cantaloupes uh and uh, tomorrow's his birthday so i have to wish him a happy birthday tomorrow we will yeah happy birthday tomorrow shane yeah. Michael, I very much appreciate it. And Tom, you're just pushing too hard. Okay, come on. You don't have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's take a phone call then. 522-TALK is the number. Caller, you're on with Mike McCormick. What's up? Um, well, I used another issue of 5G before uh, uh, you rushed to judgment. Uh, now, I think... Uh, the people are losing their bearings, uh, their bearings of being conservative. Uh, 
Uh, why rush into new stuff? Uh, it's only a theory. Uh, as uh, uh, Shane said, it wasn't uh, microwaves, but uh, I looked it up, and there are microwaves. We could be uh, fried like wieners with a, a little uh, tower every uh, few blocks. Now, and another thing is the investor, are you sure there isn't a hidden agenda for people being blinded by money. Uh, if uh, you invest your money in 5G, the uh, three people that uh, are telling you to invest are going to get a percentage. So uh, I think uh, a conservative would uh, look before he leaps. Well, that's a good question. So, Michael, do you think that 5G has a physical damage potential to it that would affect the valuation, like Daniel's asking? And should we be concerned about something like that, that they may not have done enough studying and we won't know for another 10 years? Hey, we're all, we're all going to die of cancer from all these airwaves, including our own, right, KG? Uh, the, the KMMS airwaves going that's through. That's right. That's right. Well, uh, I remember the brain cancer scare they threw on us in the 80s about cell phones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we don't know what causes it, but we also know that we're addicted to this communication and wires are not the way it's going to go. So we're going to we're going to play it till its end. That's yeah. a logical mm -hmm. conclusion, you might say. I was going to say it's pretty much it's pretty much a done deal. It's going to happen whether, you know, um, <laughs> you know, there's all kinds of things that uh, we've invented that have found to be a danger to us. Well, and here's how I look at it, market, too, is that, you know, so. you know, the brand name they're calling is 5G, mm. right? You know, they, they call things things. And, and the yeah. gist of what we're asking for is better connectivity. Yeah. Uh, right. Better right. reliability right. and, and more, more, uh, more services. And that's what the market's going to ask for, and that's what we're going to get. And so where is it going to come from to the text callers? Mm. Uh, Well-thought-out question is, is how, to, how to benefit from that. Yeah. Uh, these we're in a situation where going public for a small company um, it doesn't look as attractive and their ability to stay private looks mm -hmm. more attractive there's tons tons of money available for them to stay private and so if there's a company out there that's not already public that's developing a great technology that'll help our mm -hmm. 5g push or whatever it is uh, the opportunity for individual investors to get in is, is small yeah and well, i hate to date myself but mike's absolutely right you remember tom because Mikey was probably just being born or in grade school, but yeah. fiber optics back in the 80s, remember? Oh, yeah. And they yep. spent billions, hundreds of billions oh, of dollars gosh, to yeah. connect continents, and, mm -hmm. and they, they sold the banks on, if we build it, they will come, and they built it, and no one used it. Yeah. Remember right. that? Well, that's where Montana Power went south. <laughs> that's you know, They, went, they went with that. fiber optics, and that was the wrong you know, Careful, that's technology. a trigger word for a lot of uh, uh, well, a lot of our listeners right well, there. Well, it is, yeah. Well, well it's uh, a, a lot lesson of not to be forgotten. Savings. No yeah. kidding. Yeah. So again, you know, my mm -hmm. I, for the for the great uh, text question out there, how to play this? Unfortunately, I think that it is a boring answer for me. Which is the big boys. I mean, Apple's hitting new highs today. They've got so much cash out there. Their their role is to keep us connected with an Apple device in our pocket ear. Uh, whatever it might, home, yeah. whatever it is. If there's a new technology that's going to happen, they're going to let it be proven. They're going to mm -hmm. take it over and improve it. Uh, if there's a new technology that's going to be distributed out here, if you're not on the Verizon network, you're not getting good connectivity. Yeah. Uh, or if you're, uh, um, you know, Jeff Bezos, uh, he's not going to stand by. And he's not going to stand. This. Exactly. Right. Yeah, I mean, they, so. and, and look at the deal that your president Trump's made with Apple. Did you see Weiwa's Christmas message to their employees I a did week not. ago? Oh, boy, we'll try and survive in 2020, you know, because <laughs> Trump has banned them in Europe and right. uh, definitely in the U.S., right? Right. Yeah. So careful picking these, you know, yeah. the unicorn right, picker. And, and right. if you yeah. look at the IPOs that happened this year for the unicorns, you didn't want it in on any of them, really. I mean, there's yeah. for the risk you're taking, there's no value. So mm -hmm. the other part of the question is what sectors are, are we going to be looking at for this coming year? Boy, that that is a great question. And my view has been consistent in the decade plus I've been in this business is that there's three strong areas of growth for our country that make a pretty good diversified portfolio. One is technology. The growth will continue, not in a straight line. Part two, healthcare. With this low population rate, our business is going to be taking care of our old people, and they're going to spend all their money on staying alive and having a quality of life. Does that mean it's traditional healthcare stocks going forward? Depends who's in the White House and what happens with the Affordable Care Act, but something around healthcare growing old is going to be big, big business. 
And then the last buffer to it is, is the, and this is another, this is a risky play that I don't expect to play out this coming year, but emerging markets is where the growth is. That is where the population growth is. That's where people are, you know, driving their first car, buying their first condo. They still have a cousin that plows in bare feet with an ox. We're not having that type of growth here. That's my short little spiel on that. Okay. Uh, let's take our only break this session, Shane. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a challenge, isn't it, Mayor? Wow. It's a challenge. <laughs> Somebody's got to be in charge. That's right. We're back in 90 seconds. 16 minutes for the top of the hour. We've had a caller patiently waiting, talking with Shane. Let's go to the phones. Caller, you are on the morning soapbox with Tom and Shane and Mike McCormick. What's up? Uh, no kidding, Tom. One of my Christmas presents was a tinfoil hat. All right. Ooh. <laughs> so Hard to get those sizes to fit right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it did fit. It fit well, too. Oh, good. Yeah. One of the stories about 5G is that it was a former military crowd control weapon that they would bring in and it would overheat people in a crowd and they would disperse crowds with it. So it has the potential to be misused. Okay. Hello? Yeah, no, Back you're still there. Yeah. Sorry, the other Back line uh, went, uh, went one away. So but now we have K-pop music to do that without having to get too fancy. Yeah. The other word that's going around is that Verizon is already paying hush money in cases of brain cancer where cell phone use may, is implicated. Really? You believe that, Vinny? Vinny, you really believe that? I do. Do you really? I do. I do believe that Verizon is, uh, has known about the dangers of cell phone use. As I speak to you on a cell phone. <laughs> I just <laughs> Yeah. So so AT AT and T and uh Sprint are letting uh Verizon carry the load, huh? Well, I, I don't know about the others, but I only know about just uh, oh, okay. but, I mean that's just what I've heard. All right, man. Thanks for the call. Ten full perspective. All right. <laughs> Good for you. I like it. <laughs> Take care, man. <laughs> uh, let's see. For Mike, uh, should I, from our text line, 478-8298, uh, Mike, should I buy index fund or managed uh, fund with fees? I mean, that's a leading question. I like the softballs. I, I, if you've listened to me, you know I'm a fan of the index fund. The active funds that are doing well, they're just matching the index. Uh, anything from American funds is uh, pretty much... Uh, an index fund with a little bit of dressing on it. Um, so I'm, I'm not opposed to something like that. I think that when you pay for active management, sometimes there's nice things you get, uh, service, brochures, education. Um, they can also play small amounts of money really efficiently that might not be otherwise. So it's not a, an absolute one, but mm -hmm. watch out for these esoteric funds. They just haven't done things. Uh, there's 17,000 mutual funds out there. There's a couple hundred that go under every single year. Um, if you haven't seen the name, uh, you know, careful, you can look up past returns compared to the S and P that's an easy shopping point, but gosh, it's really hard not to say, uh, that you shouldn't just be passively putting your money at work right now. Um, yeah, there's going to be, vol it, there's going to be bumps in this road. And if it takes you to have a fancy marketing brochure and a good service advisor, that's going to help keep you in the seat. That is worth the money. Without a doubt, the worst case scenario is that you go into an index fund and you're going alone and you're going through E-Trade and you're buying these things and you're dot plotting and heat mapping and then the downturn happens and you do something rash. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest destroyer of individual wealth out there. Uh, the big picture, if you choose an active or passive, probably isn't going to change your net worth by a decimal point, uh, but the other one certainly will. Yeah. Brilliant advice. Mikey has always warned you about it. EFTs and funds, index funds, all of these. Remember... They've replaced the word commission with the word fee. Yeah. Back in my day, we paid or charged commissions. Mm -hmm. it, it, it wasn't even long ago, late 80s, that Merrill Lynch was paying people $50 just to buy or sell a stock, you know. And uh, now that now, now you can go to Charles Schwab and not pay any commissions. Mm -hmm. So remember, like Mike has warned you, if you're going to do anything, 
check the fees, the cost of fees, because your in and out expense of anything is an immediate effect on your profits and equity. Okay. Uh, from our text line, 478-8298, uh, since uh, USMCA is essentially identical to NAFTA, which it isn't, uh, does Mike see it changing markets? So when they finally get this thing signed between our three countries? Again, you... I think that the story for the year is going to be uh, that that we get weary of these agreements. Um, and, and very few people are going to be looking at the details of it and how it impacts markets. And that's where you and Shane do a great job of dissecting these things for people. But it's complicated stuff. I'm not sure how I'm personally affected by an AFTA or a USMCA mm. trade agreement. I'm not personally aware of how I'm affected by a Chinese trade agreement. Personally, if I'm just living yeah. my life with my head down, I think that's the way that most U.S. people are going to go today. There's mm. going to be times where the market swoons or breaks, and there's going to be, oh, well, it happened because of a break in trade negotiation, or yeah. uh, it's going to be, you know, mm. maybe, maybe that's true. Uh, I don't see that these, these headline, unfortunately, uh, mm. because it's, you know, you like to think that things are efficient and that markets go up because good news is happening. I think we've got a, a small disconnect about that, and uh, and I think we're going to get weary from these news news sources. I think to some degree the president understands uh, which news we'd like to hear and don't, and things that tick off the Democrats and let them spin out, and then he can go get back to work. Uh, so I don't think um, I don't think that these trade deals are going to have a whole lot to do with how our personal net worths do. And I know that sounds might sound very naive, but I think the reality is, is you look at these news stories and they have a life to them. And we're kind of waiting for the election news stories to kick up. And we've got some old ones that are sort of simmering along. Um, yes, there's real implications of all this stuff. Uh, but we can't afford not to have a good trade agreement with North and South. I think that I think that everybody recognizes that one. Well, I think uh, and, Shane, and, Shane can allude to the differences uh, where Canada's concerned, obviously. Well, yeah, we've talked about it. But again, you know, brilliant analysis by Mike. And <laughs> the, the reality of what the president is doing is he understands the news cycle. And he's annoyed by the effect that the news cycle has on the market based upon his trade relations and his negotiations. That's why I think that this whole conscript of two phases is made up. He's trying to get a hold of the valuation of the market not being impacted by it. If it's working and it's not, he wants to keep charging China uh, uh, tariffs. He should. It's worth billions of dollars to your country. He's got more to come. He's going to do the World Trade Organization over. He's going to do the European trade. The, we've t I've told you. We, you think China's going to be important? Wait till this news on England and the Commonwealth comes up. I, I, there's great stuff coming. So uh, the, the importance is, is that your president knows exactly where he's going with all this. He just wants to sort of manage the news cycle so it doesn't have a, like Mike is just explaining, a big impact mm -hmm. on the day-to-day mm -hmm. -day market fluctuation. Because, you know, that that's something that is a major peg for him going into the election. And it, with anybody, I mean, if, you're, if your negotiation has is, is got the capability to really move markets, yes, you know, exactly. that derails your overall strategy a bit, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially... Uh Especially politically, right, Mike? Yeah. I mean, politics is right. everything. Right. Yeah. Uh, from our text line, 478-8298, does uh, Mr. McCormick agree with you that the stock market and 401ks are going to tank after April? I didn't say they were going to tank. I just said if there's going to be an adjustment, that's when it would be, more than likely. Because, oh, gosh. Because I the political picture will be a lot clearer, and that's when people are going to start to worry about, or if the p political a uh, thing isn't clear, as Shane uh, alluded to. If if we are headed for a broker broker convention, I think that's going to seriously uh, make investors fearful as to what is going to come out of a broker convention. Uh, you know, we will it, find something to be could worried be about. Anybody, yeah, we, we will find exactly, something to be worried yeah. about, <laughs> so, without so. a doubt, without a doubt. Um, I I have no idea when a pullback will happen. I, I mm -hmm. uh, in terms of all I have is is what everybody else has. We look at the past data, and the past data shows that if you don't have earnings growth, you can only be expensive for so long. Mm -hmm. And we have had great earnings growth this decade. Last year, we had spectacular earnings growth, and we had, in many cases, negative returns in the stock market. 2018, I mean. 2018, we had great earnings growth, good corporate profits, low borrowing rates, uh, accommodative Fed, stock market, mm -hmm. not good. 
2019, boom, fantastic, right? I mean, yeah. 50% in the technology index. It won't go in a straight line. It's going to be scary, uh, but there's no other things to mm-hmm. do with your money right now. Uh, if, if Don't be a contrarian and bet against the market, but absolutely have some safe money available in your 401k. Don't monkey with it. If you want to, you can make it slightly more conservative, but here's the prop Bonds are an issue that we could do a two-hour show on right now. Yeah. Bonds are more overvalued than stocks in my mind. Mm-hmm. We talk about go to dividend stocks if you need income now. Uh, I would barbell it with dividend stocks and treasuries. I would not go, I would certainly not go to high yield. And I just read a report that says that junk bonds are going to have a great year. And I, you know, they're not paying you for the risk right now. We've talked about the oil industry being on, uh, on delicate footing, basically, because yeah. we've got so much. Uh, we've talked about how um, the Fed is not going to be um, able to reduce rates uh, it reliably going forward. I think that the, the data coming out from Finland right now that did the first negative interest rates, and Shane can talk about this, but negative interest rates have not worked. And the idea there is that the government says, we're going to charge people to park their money. Mm-hmm. We're going to go negative, where if you want to save money, we have a CD for you. You're going to pay me a yeah. dollar for every hundred dollars to keep yeah. your money safe. Right. Which I guess if you phrase it like that, there's yeah. some value to that. That's safe. <laughs> what they've found is that these negative rates that these uh, countries have played around with have encouraged people to be more fearful, not more aggressive. And so I would think it's especially the way that the U.S. is positioned right now. We're not going into negative rate territory. We're going to hold firm, I believe, on interest rates. Uh, and that means bonds don't have – there's a really low ceiling out there for the bondholders. So mm-hmm. that might be my big story. If we have a major dislocation in the market, it's going to happen from fixed income. Fixed income dollars are much bigger. Of course, foreign currency dollars are much bigger too. But that's where the – that's where the the oh, it happened because of this. And to think about it, that's mm-hmm. what happened last time with the, with the collateralized – Debt mortgage obligations, we're coming up with new flavors of that. I know plenty of people that are able to buy homes with very little money down. Uh, and so, yeah, we're, we're, there's a bubble underneath us. Right now, we don't see it looking like it's going to pop. That would be the forecast for me. Fixed income markets are the ones to watch out for. Yeah. Uh, from our text line, 478 microwaves, who cares, since AOC and her ilk say we've only got 10 years to live, 20 years tops. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, you live in Montana, one of the last best places. Worrying about all these things won't add one cubit to your lifespan. <laughs> You'll die from stress and anxiety before you, you before you do of any of these things you're so concerned about. So, I don't know. I, yeah, at, uh, at hey, our we're own, glass half full show here. That's it. That's it. We don't care. <laughs> so we're we're set. Uh, we're set for there. Oh, you're, 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 all, you're only stressed out <laughs> about things you don't know. Well, that's and true. You're yeah. only fearful of things you don't understand. Yeah. And so the reason that you have Mike and me talking to you, Mr. Mayor, is because we know and understand the market and the values that we're talking about. That's right. That's why you're both here. Uh, hush money from cell phone companies. This is why Alex Jones and conspiracy kooks are dangerous. Uh, well, he's talking about lobbyists. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what he was talking about. Yeah. Uh, with Trump's trade war hurting farmers, should I sell my ag stocks or hold on for more former uh, farmer bailouts uh, to help? Well, the Great trade, question. The trade I, I mean, agreement should help some. Well, question. the gist is it's not an investment thesis should not include a government bailout as yeah. a as a revenue making mm-hmm. alternative. Um, so, no, if that's your if that if that's your hope, you should get yeah. it now. Uh, however, we will someday get to inflation, which will affect commodities. Mm-hmm. I don't know when. Yeah. We've been saying easy money should create inflation for a decade, and it hasn't. And mm-hmm. we have this new economic – of course, what happens now is the economists come up with new models where we don't have an, an inflationary scenario uh, because we don't have population growth, because we don't have uh, accelerated money velocity and in international trade, and, and as Shane talks about currencies. So I don't – see it being now is the time to go into commodities however if your alternative is cash because mm-hmm. you're too afraid yes there should be a bigger allocation to commodities these alternative strategies that you hear marketed from my businesses uh really commodities do the work in a much more simple way typically at least in my experience managed futures had it had its day 
Uh, long short has never had its day. Absolute return yeah. is the most ridiculous idea if I ever heard it. Um, that's basically where a bunch of smart guys get to make fees for you holding your money at, at near zero level. Right. Um, yeah. so, but commodities would be the alternative mm -hmm. that makes sense. Uh, and so an ag yeah. stock that pays a dividend might be a nice place to be. Well, and also, too, commodities are not the place for the inexperienced investor either because that's well, a very— Well, true. And so this, it, yeah. you know, this, this uh, texter was talking about owning a company that is based in agriculture, mm -hmm. not owning the commodity directly. Right. Um, yeah. And so, yes. So the, the uh, agriculture person, uh, if, if uh, China's not buying soybeans, you can go to corn, you can go to wheat, you can go to rice, you can go to other— yep. If you're in fertilizer, yeah, somebody's growing something somewhere. I'm gonna say, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, there's something there somewhere. Uh, inflation rate right now 2.05. Right. Uh, so, so these I retirement mean, models nothing, that we yeah. put together, yeah, you know, the, the big kicker on on how much money you need to retire has to do with inflation. I mean, you have two. There's two questions: how much money will your, how much yeah. will you save, and how much will it grow, and yeah. what's it going to cost? And that's mm -hmm. inflation. And 3% was the rule of thumb that I was trained with. And, and mm -hmm. you should look at the long-term return of, re, of a treasury, and it's pulling down from three. But that's, that's sort of where I got it from. Yeah. Uh, and now we're readjusting our models. And I'll tell you what, when economists readjust their models, that's time to be careful. That's time to be that's careful. All right. To watch out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Thanks, Mike. Hey. Always a pleasure, buddy. Thanks. It's a great start to the new year. It's yeah. going to be a good one. It We're all be. living in the last Guess best you're place. In the house. We got the <laughs> soapbox. Yep, we will. Uh, we'll keep tabs uh, with Mike all year long. Hopefully, I hope so. And we'll. Uh, and thanks we'll... for all the great text questions. It's really yeah, a great community good. you guys yeah, have built here. Yeah. Every, everybody's valued, even DRP. We like you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> all right, all right. That's going to wrap it up for here. Shane and I'll be back with local and the five things you need to know and uh, your calls and texts and anything else. That's on your mind here as we start 2020. Wow. My uh, eight, my eighth decade. Shazam. Chew on that. I know. <laughs> we'll be back. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Six minutes after the hour of 8 o'clock. And uh, Shane McDobbin, half man, half amazing on the line in Cantaloupes. And uh, Tommy Galop, your morning mayor. This is the KMMS Morning Soapbox. we got a caller waiting, Shane. So... Let's go to the phones. Caller, you are on the morning soapbox with Tom and Shane. What's up? I'm just happy to be here, Tom and Me Shane. Me too. <laughs> happy our, New Year, Pete. At, at our age, we're happy to be anywhere. <laughs> Same too. That's right. Vertical and breathing is always good. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Well, there's, there's news on the job market. Okay. Yeah. It seems that they're looking for a DDR officer temporary for the New York offices of the United Nations. And the DDR stands for Disarmament, Demobilization, and Reintegration Officer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, the, What's that pay? <laughs> yeah, the, they don't have the pay in there because they don't expect you to live long enough to collect a paycheck. I got right? you, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it doesn't say where they've had anybody apply for this for the job. But you get a great insurance policy, Pete. Yeah, that's right. You are insured to probably be dead within the first day. <laughs> exactly. They got it down as, as uh, the posting period, 16 December 2019 to the 12th of January. But it was up in November. Hmm. I seen it. I'm looking right at the UN's job site. You, you know what I find fascinating about these postings you look at on on these employment sites is how many of them require in your resume a a, a degree, or a second, or a third. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just especially in government jobs. The, all the government jobs, you know, you ha you have to have a degree of uh, at least one degree to get a government job. Well, these guys, they want, cause they're kind of looking for on the job experience. They're looking for military yeah. personnel and stuff like that, you know, for, Merc for this job. Mercenaries. Yeah, mercenaries <laughs> is what, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> well, P Pete and I would qualify. We both had the third degree. That's yeah, right. You go. <laughs> I, got three, I got three degrees of everything. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> Psoriasis. Uh, yeah. And you name it. 
Yeah, three three degrees, degrees of separation will get you and Tom employed, okay? That's right. <laughs> and I'm a, I did a little little more digging on this uh, 5G. Mm-hmm. One wow. of the things I did realize was Israel was prominent in the development of this. Huge. Yeah, they were the forefront. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Sure. And now, now they've banned it. <laughs> it's banned in Israel. Um, it's banned in Switzerland, some northern California cities, Brussels city proper. Yeah, but, but you know why it's banned? You, you know why it's banned? It, you can't secure it. You, you, it, you, you know, you can't, it. you can't, yeah, you can't secure it. It's wide open. So, you know, it's, it's one of those problems, that, you know, that, uh, um, you, there, no, nobody's creating a standardized concept of, uh, of, uh, crypt, crypt, uh, cryptography, right? Well, they, there's, uh, apparently there is concern about it. No, no, yeah. no. I, well, let me give you an example. I, I, I tried to do this back in the nineties with a company. Um, the, the, the idea was the business plan or concept was is to create a, a company like Time Magazine's own crypt, crypt, uh, cryptology. Or, and so that when they went out and sold it, you know, on the market and you paid to access it, you'd get a, you know, you'd get a access to it because they could encrypt it. And then they would be able to have their own people using it and it wouldn't be to the general public. But n- nobody's come up with any standardizing of, uh, of that kind of encryption to protect their, their information. So that's the problem. Well, 5G is going, it, it's oh, it's going everywhere. Yeah. Okay, it's right. going everywhere, but, you know, there's still countries out there with Italy, France, Austria, Luxembourg, Bulgaria, Poland, Hungary, Russia, and China all have set exposure limits 100 to 10,000 times lower than the United States. Oh, of course. So you're, you're, we're looking at the... You know, there's a push right now. They've never, they haven't done any studies, not one, not zero, zilch, nothing. And uh, it's getting pushed by the the media corporations and the gamer. That's it's all about gaming, man. They get this in, and that's gonna their big market to come out of this is gonna be gaming. Absolutely, it's gonna be so fast. That's right. You, you'll be able to, to, you know, you'll think you're there. Well, you know, there's three things. Yeah, well, there's three things on the internet that have been monetized. And number one's gaming. It's not porn or, or gambling. It's actually gaming, like you say. Number two is gambling, and number three is porn, right? But 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 those are the three successful monetized, um, you know, it, things on the internet that everyone's trying to figure out. But you know, what's all? What do they all have in common? Mm. <laughs> Human emotions. Well, they, what they all have in common is that what they're looking at is the, you know, this is a millimeter wave. This, this, this stuff, 5G did not come out to, to get, let you play game or do gaming faster. It came out, like Vinny said, as it, it's weapon technology. And that there's multiple uses for it as a weapon. Heating up your skin is just one of them. You know, well, yeah, but th- you know that's that's like saying you know the airline industry and Boeing came out to build airplanes for the military to move people around the planet to fight wars. Well, no, they didn't really. I mean, they they can, you know, they, they, they you know, we talked about this, right? You know that, I know that, we've talked about it. You, the U.S. government can instantly demand the use of every commercial airline in, in North America to you know transport troops in the event of war, right? So I mean. They were doing exactly, the same. You know. They did the same thing with boats for since World War One. Of course they have. We, one, we know if you're, that. If you're a I boat know. owner, you know if you own a big commercial fishing boat, don't even have to be a big one. That's you know, right. You fall under the, mar- the merchant seamen's deal. Well, God, they God, can God, come and get yeah. your boat. They come take your boat and <laughs> your crew. That's right. Yeah, there you are. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, they that's been going on for a long time in different different ways and they'll take That's anything right. they want yeah. but uh, i i think that there's pushback on on this so i don't know if i was going to invest in 5g i think i'd wait a little while and see what's happening out there because there's more and more people that are pushing back on it i mean california okay. come on 
Well, yeah, but I, I, like I said in the last uh, block, we were talking about this. I said, you know, 30 years ago, they're telling us that cell phones are going to create brain cancer. Give me it, it, just one known example that's been referenced as being caused by, you know, cell phones of, of someone having. You know, there, there's far more other things causing brain cancer than cell phones. Well, that doesn't mean that cell phones can't cause brain cancer. And why don't Lloyd, the wonder and I know, but I know. No. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> I hope I'm not listening to you yeah. on, a, on a cell phone. No. <laughs> well, they, they put the warning right in your phone. Uh, they won't, They can't. They, uh, Lloyd's of London will not insure them against um, cancer or anything yeah. or any damage from a cell phone. So, you know. That that's got to tell you something. Yeah, well, it's Lloyd's of London, or they don't it, take yeah. risk. <laughs> well, but that, that's what that's their job to take take risk. You know, <laughs> not not Lloyd's of London, baby. No, 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 no. no. A totally different well, story. If, there, I yeah. guess if they're not willing to take risk, you don't need them. Hey, Lloyd's of London and the Lloyd's Bank are the only people that got whacked from what happened in two thousand eight. Okay, seriously, you know, because they, they made whack. it happen. We are whacked That's for happened. what? What making making two thousand eight happen? The financial collapse. Oh, so they insured they insured money, and risk. that's risk, isn't it? That's right. But only <laughs> only risk that they're not going to lose at. Right. Well, they, 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 they learned they, that they, from they, the they, south. They learned that from the South Seas debacle in the sixteen hundreds. Oh, I thought you were going to say the the the, the Tulip Rebellion. <laughs> no, that that was the 1400s. <laughs> it was, Shane, yeah, Shane it was, was there. <laughs> Shane was there for both. Right. Yeah, I, only as an observer. Okay, right. I'm paid yeah, to, right. he's a UN UN observer. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Tom. No, no, it's not for observers. Well it's, 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 well it's for disarmament, demobilization, and reintegration, not observation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Lloyd's of London's not going to insure your butt if you take this job. Yeah. Well, Lauren, <laughs> guaranteed. Lloyd's of London won't insure Shane and I either because yeah, I don't know, <laughs> this job's just too dangerous. <laughs> wow, well, you guys are getting a little long in the tooth. That might have. Well, that's it. it. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Oh, well, here comes the long in the tooth joke. <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe you, Pete. <laughs> That's a cut him off, Tom. All He's right, not being nice. <laughs> All right, hate speech. I'm out of here. All right, later, Pete. Happy New Year. Same Always to a you. pleasure, Pete. Thanks, buddy. All right, we got to take a brief, and I mean brief, uh, thirty second break. We'll be right back. Eighteen minutes after the hour, it's Thursday, January second, twenty twenty. Already, wow, twenty years into the two thousand, Shane. Uh, how's Time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? <laughs> it, it? It is. Now, get to the city news, will you? Because everyone wants to know what's going on with taxes and uh, well, property and the new school and the yeah. road. And <laughs> well, let's take a phone call before we go okay, there right. and see what the callers have to say. Caller, you're on the morning soapbox with Tom and Shay. What's up? Hey, I want to talk about microwaves. Microwaves. All right. Microwaves. Let's go. Yeah. Sure, you know, I bet you know what a microwave oven is. You probably use one, right? No, I don't use them. Yeah. I've got one. Oh, they're dangerous. Shane, Shane, hold on a second. Yeah. Been talking a long time. Why don't you use one? Why are they dangerous? Because they're microwaves. What do microwaves do to your brain? <laughs> well, I, I have no idea. I'm not that. I'm not a physicist. I'm. I'm just. You know. I you just read said, a lot. You just said they were dangerous. What, <laughs> what could they possibly do to you? What I'm you giving. Food? I'm giving you a hard time. This is Shane Sass. Okay. This. This is 2020 Shane Sass. Okay. Go ahead. No, it's What's just, wrong with a microwave? Not, go. That's not what the deal is. The deal is you're extremely naive. Both <laughs> you and Tom. That's your okay. middle name. Naive. Okay. Microwaves are very dangerous to human tissue. Very dangerous. Yeah. And when back back when Rush, you wanted an example of brain damage or ear damage. Well, you got Johnny Cochran, and you got Rush Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh, genius that he is, decided to prove microwaves phones were not dangerous. Strapped two of them to his head for hours, 
and was filmed on TV doing this, scoffing and laughing, kind of like you would do. And guess what happened to his inner ear? Hmm, I wonder. Uh, Johnny Cochran likewise died of brain cancer. He's constantly on his cell phone. And this is at a time when cell phones are running at a frequency of about 1,000 megabytes. Now they're double that. They're twice as dangerous. You're going to go into 5G, go ahead. But be aware of them. They're very dangerous. If you're talking on a cell phone, always use a speakerphone. Get it further from your head. Like Pete said, the closer to your brain, the more damage you get. Okay, I have so one guys, question. Come on. I have one go question. Ahead. So, so, so do you believe in the green, green theory then about global change and climate change? I do not, Shane. Nice try. You see, you you're, you're, matching, you're matching emotion into science. I don't care about green crap. I'm not a greenie. I, I, what I'm I didn't do you, that. I just asked you a question. I didn't make any assumptions. You, you diverted me because you can't answer my question. Of course I can. You think my, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll answer dangerous. it right off you the bat. You don't know why. Right off Government. the bat, I'll answer it. Show me the studies. Show me the numbers. How many people have had cancer? How many people have had skin cancer? Any kind of human cancer is a result of microwaves, cell phones, or any kind of radio waves or television waves in the last hundred years. Show me the study. All right. You just you just made a ridiculous statement to Pete. You said you can't show me one person that said my I'm asking you. I'm asking phone. you. I mean if my okay, well, I just I just gave you two examples. That's got not good enough. After I give you more, you'll see well I need more. Uh, I'm sorry, what, yeah, what you're were the naive, studies? buddy? What no what, hey, what studies you're naive. did you quote? Oh. What's the you're naive you and you always talk over the top of people you don't agree with. That's rude. That's I, just I, what you I want. don't disagree with you. I want to learn. So what studies are you representing? You want to learn? You just you just scoffed at Vinny and Pete, who said that microwaves were dangerous to the brain. And you have no studies to prove either way, and yet you scoffed at Oh, yeah, I, I've said got it's okay. Well, microwaves have been around for 60 years. So we read all the time case studies of the National Institute of Health that they do on different things that over 20 years and how many people they mm -hmm. study for different things for cancers and, and, yeah. and cures and everything. And I'm just asking you if you can refer I me want to you to put three. your head in a microwave oven. Rig, rig the door so that it trips the It'll switch. Explode. Put your head in the microwave oven <laughs> and talk from there. The no, government it would says explode. they're safe. You know. Yeah, it's inside, your head would explode? Inside the it oven's a little regularly. more dangerous than outside the oven. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you what, Steve. If you think, really, if you think that, my, that telephones, microwave cell phones, if you think that they're not somehow dangerous, just put it as close to your head as you possibly can, like Rush Limbaugh, then I'll believe you. Okay. Thanks, All right. been a lot of fun. Hey, thanks for the call. Yeah. All right, uh, let's see. From our uh, text line, Shane, uh, it says, uh, believe it or not, uh, Limbaugh's hearing loss was due to Oxycontin, not microwaves. That's from Dave. And uh, uh, conspiracy kook suddenly got Ph.D. in electronics. Uh, we wouldn't have television if these kooks were around in the past. Or radios. Yeah. Yeah. So would or, you say or, or for that matter, even sound systems, really. Because sound waves can be just as dangerous, right? I I know that from working in a, in nightclubs back in, you know, in my twenties. You know, I have bad hearing because I think you know the loud music, working in them hours and hours and hours. You know, as this, as anyone will tell you, you you know you know anything in moderation, right, Tom? Isn't that our motto? Mm -hmm. Everything in moderation. Right there, you are. All right. Uh, let's see. Bytes, bytes, B Y T E S. Bytes are not a frequency. Hertz is a frequency. There you are. So. There you go. <laughs> so that's a good one. I like that. We're on microwaves, uh, I guess, for the next hour. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Well, let's while we're waiting for the next microwave call, let's uh, talk about uh, the flu season. Uh, we're experiencing a hike in uh, Montana. Uh, flu season is uh, widespread, and uh, cases of the flu have been recorded in at least half the regions of the state, with 198 new cases uh, reported by the week of the 21st. The other thing that we're up on is uh, we're up on uh, uh, STDs as well, Shane. We're 
Well, that's not good. No, it's not good. We're up uh, way more than we uh, should be on uh, that um, uh, that uh, uh, record as well. So yeah, we need to kind of cool it with the with the uh, with our human contact. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna get the flu or an STD, one of the two. So be well, yeah, ca- and, be and careful you know out the there. thing about it is, is that it, it, STDs, sexual transmitted. There are a lot of them, and they're not just, you mm-hmm. know, HIV. You know, there, there's herpes is considered an STD, and and other types of diseases that you should be oh, gonorrhea. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of STD types mm-hmm. of infections you should be aware of. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. From our text line four seven eight eight two nine eight. Good radio. I enjoy the different views. So so do we. That's why we're here. <laughs> we're, we're not here to mimic uh, the same view all the time. So exactly. Let's uh, let's uh, let's get some difference of opinion going here. Caller, you are on the morning soapbox with Tom and Shay. What's up? I'm wondering uh, that teller you had on there a moment ago talking about cell phone usage causing yeah. damage. And I, uh, I, I too would like to see a little proof because in the past 30 years, cell phone usage has gone from virtually zero to infinity. And to my knowledge, there hasn't been all that much change in uh, in the incline of cancers, et cetera. It's just kind of a steady pace. Yeah. So I have to, uh, they're going to say things like that. they got to come up with some kind of an excuse or some kind of a, some kind Stead. of proof, excuse yes. me, because it's just not there. All right. Hey, thanks for the call. Thank you. All right. Happy New Year, Jam. All right. Uh, from our text line, if cell phones cause cancer with billions of users out there, we should see millions of brain cancer cases. Right. I agree. That, that's I, I wasn't arguing with him. Mm-hmm. That's why I was saying, you know, and the, the 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 point to be made there. You need to hang up on my phone so I can call you. Um, the, the need to the need to to be there is that studies, case studies. You know, like um, I was reading a great study last week um, by the National Institute of Health in your country about uh, whole wheat and how the impact it has on. Um, um, oh, you know uh, what? Oh my gosh! You know the the pain you get in your bones, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what's it, what's it called? Um, help me! What's it? You, you know that everybody when you get older you get the pain arthritis, in your bones, something like that. Arth- thank you, arthritis. Yeah. I couldn't think of the word. So anyway, they've done all these studies. Now these studies have been done over twenty years, and and the studies represent uh, tens of thousands of people, and there there seems to be a clear association between. Uh, whole wheat bread and arthritis in older people. Mm-hmm. Um, now there's that de- disease that uh, people have where they're allergic to wheat. Yeah. And, and uh, what this study was saying is what they discovered is as some people, you know, like peanuts, people have allergy. I'm allergic to coconut. Like my throat sw- sears, you know, swells up. I could die. But the point is, is that, um, you know, some degree of, uh, in, of uh, a- allergic reaction to wheat in your body can cause these kinds of things. And that's why you want to read all these kinds of studies. There's great stuff out there to read. It's entertaining. Better than watching television. Yeah. Uh, From the Mayo Clinic, uh, after evaluating several studies on the possibility of a connection between cell phones and glaucoma, or um, sorry, not glaucoma, Mm -hmm. uh, (laughs) G-L-I-O-M-A, Gloma, I guess, yeah. And a non-cancerous brain tumor known as uh, acoustic neuroma, members of the International Agency for Research on Cancer, part of the World Health Organization, agreed that there's limited evidence that cell phone radiation is a cancer-causing <laughs> agent, a carcinogen. Uh, as a result, the group classified radio frequency electromagnetic fields as possibly car- carcinogenic to people. So, possibly possibly yeah. yeah so yeah so there you go so it's there but it's not there <laughs> well so, everything is everything right. moderate alcoholism is there but it's not there right I that's mean, right all right <laughs> personal behavior so 
I, I guess the caller's right. Keep the cell phone on speakerphone. Keep it away from your head, and you'll be fine. So <laughs> let's, we got to go to the bottom of the hour here. Fox News, Montana State News. We'll be back. 26 minutes for the top of the hour. It's Thursday, January 2nd, 2020. This is AM 1450 KMMS in Bozeman, 1340 KPRK in Livingston, where Montana talks. Shane Tobin, half man, half amazing in Cantaloupes, Canada. And Tommy Gallop, your morning mayor. In beautiful downtown Bozeman, Montana, and this is the the morning soapbox with Tom and Shane, and um, from our text line four seven eight eight two nine eight summary of the Russian uh, investigations published by the Atlantis Rising Educational Center in Portland, Oregon. Uh, this is too long to read in its entirety, but I'll give you some of the high points. Um, Microwaving prepared meats sufficiently to ensure sanitary ingestion caused formation of uh, well-known uh, carcinogens. Microwaving milk and cereal grains converted some of their amino acids to carcinogens. Uh, extremely short exposure of raw cooked or frozen vegetables converted their plant alkaloids to carcinogens. Uh, male and female hormone production is shut down or altered by continually eating microwave foods. This affects the sex drive and fertility. Microwave foods cause uh, stomach and intestinal cancerous uh, tumors. Uh, microwaving uh, alters um, essential food substances causing digestive disorders and so on and so on. So there you are. So if you want to look look up the Russian study uh, that Mueller used, go for it. <laughs> I, I guess. So, <laughs> all right. So, I don't know. Uh, not only, not only do, do I use a microwave oven, I used to sell them. <laughs> so, so here we are. Hey, you naughty boy! <laughs> I'm just a bad person all the way around. Yeah. Know? So, I don't know what to tell you with that. So, uh, let's see. Oh, what do we got in other news? Hey, the be, Bozeman. Be careful. You could open yourself to a class action suit. I know, a class action suit there for selling microwaves. <laughs> well, the Bozeman Library, they're going to eliminate late fees, uh, Shane. What do you think? Huh? <laughs> it's only 2% uh, of their revenue, so they. Well, not only that, but it, it, they sh there shouldn't be because <laughs> in the modern day, very, so few people, I think, use libraries. I, not like when you and I were children, of course. And. Certainly not like 40 years ago before the internet, but yeah. uh, you, you know it's uh, it's one of those things. I mean, it just amazes me how bookstores are still around. I know, yeah. Well, some people just like to hold the book. I know, I know me, I do. Yeah, I do, I do too. I, I you know? I'm not a Kindle pal, even though I've got Kindle. But uh, I bought one, never used it. I mean, I used it, but I I just couldn't get comfortable with it. Yeah, yeah. You Weird. gotta you gotta turn that page, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, right. Like I, that, I'm not a slider, you know. Yeah. From our text line, 478-8298, as one texter humorously and brilliantly said, uh, we've only got 20 years left, according to the Democrats. So why was your last... So why was your last caller so upset about an obviously moot point? Exactly. Also... <laughs> he was the one being rude to Shane and acted like he was some kind of expert on microwave frequencies, health risks, uh, yet the caller didn't know the difference between a byte and a hertz, uh, which is the wavelength uh, interval concerning uh, electronic radia electromagnetic radiation. Now, that That's is right. hilarious. He is definitely narcissistic. So, <laughs> all right, there you are, so. Well, I I don't know if microwaves are dangerous or not. Do I really care at my age? I don't know. Well, no. we know from movies you can't dry a, a cat or a small dog in them. Right? Well, you can't do that. Yeah, you can't you can't put you can't put <laughs> animals. You can't put animals in there. You know, I've. <laughs> I, well, it's like I like I told you. You know, I I have had I had glasses since I was five years old yeah. and bottle bottoms, like really bad. Yeah. And 2004, I finally got the laser surgery done, but I waited 20 years, 20 mm -hmm. almost 25 actually. Yeah. The Russians had developed that too, like the microwave. Mm -hmm. And you know, I thought, eh, maybe I gotta wait. Like, you know, I don't want to end up blind. I mean, I'm blind yeah. anyway, so yeah. I don't want to make it worse. Yeah. But you know what? I'm glad I did it. And I, sometimes mm -hmm. I have issues with focus now at 65. Yeah. And I've read about it, and they say, oh, you may go in and get, a like, a refit, you know, yeah. like. Mm -hmm. 
you know, a tidy up on your, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, whatever. But I mean, it's these are choices you make, and like mm -hmm. we say, right? You, it's you know, it's it's a choice. You make a choice. You're gonna use a microwave? Don't use my. My daughter won't. You know, yeah. Got two little kids. She doesn't. They do not eat anything in their microwave. Yeah. Period. Well, we use our sparingly. I mean, we don't. Uh, you know, I I don't use it every day to heat something up to eat. You know, or whatever. You don't? No, oh, okay. no, I don't. No, no, I I I'd rather have uh, you know something cooked or whatever. Uh, particularly yeah. if it's anything that has, um, you know, if it's anything that's got any kind of a crust or anything like that, microwave just doesn't produce a very good, you know, crust or. Right, right. You know, right. if you're going to reheat breaded stuff. No, that's not, doesn't work. Yeah, it's no. better to heat it in the oven, you know, yeah, than, uh, I agree than do that. that. So that's what I do, you know. So, yeah. you know, if I got something quick or, you know, whatever, I'm trying to think what I, you know, I, maybe if, uh, um, you know, if we've got leftover pizza, I'll throw it in the microwave for a minute. You know. Yeah, but it ruins the crust. Well, yeah, it, it really does. But it, you know, it heats up the cheese and whatever, and <laughs> you know, you know, after after years of you know waking waking up <laughs> and wondering where I am. <laughs> you know? That's right. But That's there's but there's cold pizza in a microwave. I'm okay. You know? Hey, listen, Biden doesn't even know what state he's in, so you're okay. I know. I'm ahead, of, I'm ahead of that. So. Yeah, I right, way ahead, yeah. <laughs> Let's take a phone call. 522-TALK is the number. Call you on the air. What's up? Is this a new year or not? <laughs> good morning, good sir. Happy New Year 2020. Yeah, you too, Shane. I just wonder, is this a new year to start out with? Absolutely. And it is for us. It's our eighth decade, uh, uh, Clint. Yeah, well, I'll just kind of check it. See if yeah. it was a new year or not. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, hard to I tell wanna... the difference, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, Clint, I have a question for you. Yeah. Okay, well, I don't get it as a Canadian. You know, they have this big ball in New York that drops down from the top of the building. Yeah. Why? Why don't they have two? I don't know. <laughs> Hell, I don't know. I know you. I know you're up there at your daughter's place. I guess they're in Kamloops, and you're that's yep. a pretty beautiful country. It's it is, but this time of year it's really cold. I mean, I it'd be well. That's it's, good for you, you know. And it's a dry cold like Montana, like you know, it's dry. I know. I, you know, yeah, yeah, I've been there, down through Revelstoke and St. Mary's and stuff. That's a beautiful yeah. drive. To end of it Mount. is a beautiful drive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I called about this morning is this: we better quit worrying about microwaves. <laughs> Okay. If it's going to kill us, they'll kill us. Okay, that's the way I got it figured. Yeah, if it's good or bad, I don't know. I'm not going to voice an opinion. But I will voice an opinion on this. In the state of Montana, now I want you to listen real close because I've said this before. In the state of Montana, there are 167 cities that dump their water, their treated water and untreated water into our rivers and streams. They all have permits from the state of Montana, and I have an, a copy of all of them. And the thing we got to worry about is our water. It's like Well, well yours is all fresh. Everything else is going downstream. Well, that's, that's why we have the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> yeah. But what I want to say is this here. And, and I really mean this, and I hope that uh, Laura Zimmer is listening to me t today. She's a, an attorney uh, for the Smith River decision. The most important thing we've got here in this valley, and in the Ruby Valley, and in the Beaverhead Valley, we are, without any doubt, the headwaters of the Missouri River. That is the headwaters. Now, on them 167 cities I just told you about that have these permits, there's less than a fourth of them have sewer plants. Less than a fourth. Now, the thing that's happening here is this. These sewer plants, like Bozeman and like the one they're building here at Four Corners, and we got two of them right here. We got the one at Elk Grove, and we got a new one being built right here next to me. The most important thing about all of this is they take this 
treated water and inject it back into the ground. Okay, 10 parts per million for phosphates and nitrates. Now, to give you an example of what has happened to the water and the cities, there's a little town by the name of Ballantyne in eastern Montana, below Mile City in Terry, and another great little place, town. Great there. place to fish on the mussel shell. Yeah. Well, I know where the mussel shell heads. But anyway, uh, down there, the towns can't drink the water. It's polluted with phosphates and nitrates. Okay, that's right on the Yellowstone, okay? Now, I'm telling you, we, what we better worry about is the water. We can go to space and piss off a lot of money up there in that space station and treat the water there that they that when they do their thing in there, they go to the bathroom, they retreat it and drink it again. Now, what we better start doing is the same thing right here, right here in Montana. And well, that, we that's don't. Where, but but that's where all, a lot of the signs came from. Good of you to point it out. But well, the, the, a lot of signs for cleaning water came from NASA. Well, here's the bad thing about it. There's birds. There's uh, there's insects, there's cattle, there's deer, there's elk, there's all kinds of animals that drink this water that we've dumped our waste into in these rivers and streams. Have you ever drank or tasted desalinated water from the ocean? Listen, I spent two and a half years in Korea, and I know all about desalinated water. I'm just asking. Water. No, no, I, I, no, I know. It's, it tastes I terrible. Slept, I slept right there on, on the where we desalinated uh, seawater into drinking yeah. water. They're, they it it the tastes reefers. terrible. Didn't you think, don't you think it tastes terrible? Ours didn't. Ours, mm -hmm. we had good water. We took, the ocean has got 7% salt, uh, right. Jane. That's mm -hmm. all it's got. Okay, but the water, what I'm trying to say is, when we treat these, uh, these treating plants can only take so much of the, of the, pharmaceuticals and all, only so much of the chemicals, these household chemicals, they can only take so much out. You, you follow me? And the rest of it goes into our streams. And we're going to have to, it's going to kill us if we don't change our ways here with this water. So I would advise everybody to think about their water. They put fluoridation in the water. Okay, fluoride. What the hell for? Make your teeth strong? I don't think so. But anyway, that's my opinion. But the thing is, the farmer, the rancher, everybody that raises livestock. Well, wait, that's a good point. So you, you, a lot of people think fluoride is used as an antibacterial in water. Do you think so? No, sir. I do not think so. Just thought I'd ask because, you know, there, there a lot of people talk about that. What's Hitler that? used it, you know, Shane. He used a lot of it, more so than yes, what sir. we do, of course, uh, was to... Was to make the people a little docile. I guess that's what I've read in true mm -hmm. history, but I don't know if it's right or wrong for sure, but that's what they say. But I do know what I'm telling you and everybody else is a fact, and I can prove it. I can prove everything I'm saying. And people better start listening. And I'm telling you, you have all these diseases. Think about it. We dump their stuff into the river, our treated water goes to dams and stuff. Uh, some of it will be taken out by, by infra, infrared uh, radiation, some of it. But then we take it back out again and try to retreat it and then feed it back to the people. And then they wonder, why in the hell there's so much sickness? Why the hospitals are so full of people? The cancer and various different things. When I was a young man, on Cherry Creek and down here on the West Gallatin River. We never had these sewer plants dumping in there. And us kids used to go into them swimming holes. We'd try to catch them big fish. And if we, when I was breaking horses, I'd take a horse into the holes that won the buck, and he couldn't buck very good in the water. But we could drink the water. I'm scared to death to drink any water out of the West Gallatin because of the various different septic systems that's in there, and I have one. And Big Sky, they get to, they got a permit to dump into it. The thing is, we have got to stop doing what we're doing and change it. We've got to change this. We've got to, we've got to put in a treating plant of some sort 
of e- in these cities. I know it's costly, but we piss our money off all overseas to various different countries. It's time for us to take care of this country and the infrastructure that's so badly needed. And if we don't, we're going to kill ourselves with through the water. Got to go. That's all right. a fact. I thank Tom. All right. Thanks very much for letting mm-hmm. me expound upon this. It's sure, so no important. Problem. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. It, it is so important that people wake up. All right. Okay. See Thanks you later. for the call. All right. You Happy better. New Year. Bye-bye. Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to do the rush update, uh, and you're going to hear two Credit Karma commercials, the same one, one before rush, one after rush. So, <laughs> hey, uh, I don't sell them. <laughs> That's just the way it is. So we'll be right back. Here's here's Rush and Credit Karma. Six minutes before the top of the hour. This is News Radio. I am 1450 KMMS in Bozeman, 1340 KPRK in Livingston. Online at fine computers around the world, KMMSAM.com. Shame and Tom and Half Man, Half Amazing in uh, Cantaloupes, Canada. Tommy Goloff, your morning mayor. And we got to get a couple news stories in here real quick before we have to go. Uh, the uh, county, uh, we'll talk with the county commissioners tomorrow. The county's going to start charging you for documents. <laughs> you, know, you go in there and uh, get a document from the county, uh, they're going to charge you a, a quarter for a one-sided eight and a half by 11 uh, paper. And uh, they're also going to charge you uh, whatever the fee will be if uh, you put it on a thumb drive or email it to you or uh, things like that. Well, so I love the paper copy. Because now you got to pay for it twice. Well, yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, you paid for the copy for them to use in the first place, and well, then you got to pay. <laughs> yeah, you pay the taxes for the copier and all of that. And now you got to pay again. So, yeah, that's so crazy. yeah, that's. <laughs> so we'll that's we'll talk crazy. to the county commissioners tomorrow <laughs> on that one. Hopefully, they'll be in uh, tomorrow. I think we talked to them last week, and they said uh, at least Don said he would probably be here. So. Yeah. So the other thing that's really important is uh, Montana could be uh, on uh, pace to re- uh, get a second House seat. House seat. House of Representatives. Ta-da. Yeah. See, because all those liberals are moving there. That's right. After 30 years, uh, <laughs> uh, 30 years after losing a second seat in the House, uh, we might just be able to get it back because uh, we got an estimated uh, 1.069 million people uh, are here. And uh, we may have more than that uh, coming in. And it looks like about uh, 10 states are forecast to lose a state. California would be one, uh, certainly. Illinois, I think, is also on par to lose. Actually, I think California's losing four. Are they? Well, that could be, yeah. But uh, anyway, it says, uh, yeah, the 10 10 states are uh, possibly uh, not going to have a uh, seat there. So... They, but of course, uh, Cal- California is going to count all the illegal immigrants, so they're going to ask for five more. Well, they probably, yeah, they probably <laughs> will with that, with that at least. So, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, also, uh, uh, the uh, uh, the other report, I guess. Times Square, uh, the safest place on earth for New Year's Eve. Did you see all the? Uh, all the uh, security they had for Times oh. Square, man, they wall you off, and uh, they got yeah. Uh, pe- people lined up yesterday morning and had yeah. to stay where they were for fourteen hours. Yeah, There's no yeah. in and outs. Now, yeah, uh, two people died over, uh, last night. A woman in Texas, uh, she was at a car, in a cul-de-sac. A sixty-one-year-old woman, and they were celebrating, and she yelled out, "I've been shot!" And they got to her and passed before nine eleven arrived. And a young boy, uh, two-year-old, I mm-hmm. can't remember where, but uh, yeah, he got shot from, guess what? We warn people not to do, shoot guns in the air. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. There you so go. there, uh, yeah, there she was. So, yeah. And um, she was shot before midnight, not before 9-11. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. you're so bad. Oh, you know, 2020, folks. Remember, yeah. I eyeglass I jokes and, and that's uh, right. Yeah. yeah. All right, come on, crimes in the court. What, what else you got? Locally yeah, she was uh, she was shot in the foyer, which is right below the liver. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. All right. So. Chichong, or, I don't have a drum. I, what am I Ooh, doing? Okay. Here? Well. Well, let's see. Uh, other uh, things here, of course. Uh, um, we've got uh, the uh, big deal in uh, in Iraq, of course, uh, the oh, tensions yeah. in Iraq uh, uh, going on there between Iran and uh, 
all the folks over there that are uh, going crazy. Well, all I know is it's a perfect excuse for your president to say, we're done, call the PM, prime minister up of Iraq and say, we're leaving, thank you, goodbye, you hate us, we're gone. Yeah. I just, I would just leave. I'd be out of there. I'd yeah, just for sure. Call, call, yeah. call the Pentagon and say, pick, send all the C-5s you need to pick up every tank, every howitzer. Every, everything out of everything. here. We're out of here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You could be a ran light as far as exactly. we're concerned. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Bernie Sanders got 34 million bucks in fourth quarter donations, and uh, uh, Pete Buttigieg got 24 million. Uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren got 17, uh, and Andrew Yang uh, raked in 16 million. Tulsi Gabbard got 3 million. And uh, Cory Booker uh, has raised six million. So there you are. I thought Cory dropped out. I did. No, I don't know about that. But yeah. uh, what's his name? Uh, you know the ex uh, uh, cabinet member from uh, from, from mm -hmm. Obama's campaign. The uh, um, I think he, his family's from uh, Puerto Rico. What's his name? Garcia? No. He anyway. He quit in today. Oh, okay. The Castro. Castro, okay. yeah, okay. Yeah, he's oh. gone. He quit today. Yeah. Okay, well, he was a he was worried they're down, anyway. Yeah, he, they're down to fifty. He lost because he grew a beard. You know, I'm telling you. You know. No, his brother grew the beard. He grew a beard too. <laughs> both of them did. So, anyway, they're twins, folks. Yeah, That's I know they're happened. twins, but well, not everyone may know that. Come on, <laughs> they're identical twins. That's right. Yeah. Well, it's been reported that breast cancer has a huge jump in teen girls because they tuck their phones in their bras. So maybe that's oh. um, what's going on. Where did uh, you get that? Come that's on. from our text line. Oh, uh, best time to rob anywhere, New York City, other than Times Square. So there you are. <laughs> 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 All cops are down at Times Square. So And so are the people. <laughs> that's right. All right. <laughs> Well, since you're not going to hear it at the top of the hour, this is News Radio AM 1450 KMMS of Bozeman, 1340 KPRK in Livingston, online KMMSAM.com. Say goodbye, Shane. Live in the moment. <laughs> live to be happy. Be safe. God bless everyone. Happy 2020. All right. We'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, 6 a.m.